you guys can start talking okay good morning good morning good afternoon i should say welcome to the amazing surf line series this is 20 foot plus brought to you by Surfline, salt and air studios future fins and sea do water skis my name is ezra rodriguez bringing it to you live with my buddy professor and doctor professor isaiah walker aloha uh, good afternoon pretty excited about this swell and the fact that we have Surfline going live right now and so essentially with with this in with what we're doing today is not just bringing you live events, but it's also teaming up as we're with a uh, heavy water surf organization. So apparently this was started in 2019 by Jerry, Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter and uh, a way to kind of, I would say sort of like a, a, an exploration of, of surfing, not necessarily a competition, but an expression session of sorts yep. to highlight surfers, big wave surfing in a 20 foot plus range. So we have quite a few of them out there today. We're also joined uh, with the Red Bull Magnitude uh, yeah. event. It's a, it's a video competition for our wahine, our women uh, chargers, and we have quite a few of them out there today. So we do have, you know, solid waves at Waimea Bay, and it looks like we're right in the kind of the peak of the swell, Ezra. So yeah. it's kind of exciting to, to watch Waimea do its thing. 18 seconds, and yep, the waves should just be getting bigger throughout the day. Like you said about that Red Bull magnitude, the Manawahine, they are out there in force. Right now I have a list of the women that would be surfing as we got a goofy foot surfer taking a medium one right on the inside. I did see two hours ago, there was a few uh, sets that came into Waimea Bay that were pretty girthy, the nice vertical deep drops from behind and guys have been surfing pretty good so far. So exciting day. As you guys knew the huge drama of the Eddie I cow, it was on and then we went over some things and now it's not a go, but they are definitely looking for the 22nd Isaiah, but they're also this event is just, it's just about these guys that we've been talking about, Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter. They wanted to take their big wave careers into their own hands and they wanted to write and pave their own path of big wave surfing since there's no tour. So there's a giant group of these big wave athletes, Wahine and men, and they're just, you know, the they all came to town for the Eddie I Cow Invitational, and since it's called off, they're still going to get an amazing session in today. Thank you, Surfline. Yeah, um, there's definitely some sets out there. Uh, when, I, when I was driving in mm -hmm. from from my job, actually, I had to teach class this morning. At oh yes, BYU Hawaii. Good so shout stuff. out to my students and Mahalo for um, for letting me sneak away from from class. But uh, yeah, I drove over and. You know that feeling when you round the corner right at Shark's Cove? Mm -hmm. And then, you, you know, usually Shark's Cove is a place where people go snorkeling and stuff. But yeah, on a rubber day, duckies. Right. And, yeah. And three tables and all that. But, you know, when, when the waves are cracking and on a day like today, when we get these 20 foot plus waves, that zone is just so much mana. Just you, you feel and Big you can time. hear it and it's just cracking on the rock. So it was cool to see that. All right. Just to have that energy in the water. And so it's it's there's definitely some sets and were you flowing around coming from the east side because i do know some people don't pay attention they might think that the eddie i cow is on was there cars people everywhere oh uh, there were a lot of people i mean you and you'll see i mean you see with the drone shot here there's definitely Beautiful. a lot of people on the beach and i think some people were you know some folks they go and they camp out the night mm -hmm. before when they know that the eddie's happening but um i think most people knew that it wasn't gonna run yeah so. i found out a little bit previous but i was nervous like do i camp or do i try to make it to the event so you can see a lot of the spectators are lined up along the road there mm -hmm. and um so but you can also see cars moving so traffic wasn't it too is bad. blowing yeah salt and air studios coming in with the drone footage it's always great to see different perspectives as they have their cameramen set up in every nook and cranny at waimea here comes something. We got some paddlers. Beautiful pop up to his feet. He's going to backside down the line. Oh, gets engulfed by the white water as the guy kicks out into the channel. So 
You know, the good news, Ezra, I know we were one of the reasons why the Eddie was on hold, too, was because the forecast for the wind wasn't mm -hmm. looking too good and had a little too much north in it. But as you can see now, it looks like it's already swinging around with enough east in the wind mm -hmm. to where, I mean, that last wave, it looked a little side offshore, which is a good sign. It's not, you know, blowing from yep. straight from the north. And when the ocean is alive like this, it's going to add some lumps and bumps to it. But I mean, these conditions to one of our Maui boys is just not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> these guys surf in the wind a lot as wave rolls past the crowd. And yeah, so 20 foot plus is all about telling stories of our community, says Porter. This community is made up of people who are fathers, mothers, professionals, and tradesmen. Oh, here's a good one. Yeah, three guys sharing an amazing traditional Waimea wave engulfed by the white water. The deeper, the more nuts you are, let me tell you. I mean, when you're that sitting that deep, you know you're not going to make it past, but you're going to man up on some heavy white water. Ooh, that was a nice drop. Beautiful drop by these two. A lot of red vests out there, you guys. It's just a coincidence. It isn't part of the 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 group but there is a big group out there um no just maybe there was a sale for the for this vest oh yeah yeah <laughs> quicksilver just put their amazing uh water safety vest on sale before the the eddie I cow sale special but yeah you got the heavy water surf organization out there and you know if you guys haven't heard about jamie mitchell and zach porter there are two hard charging chargers got the drone replay angle it's amazing like on on most waves you know you you make the drop and you mm -hmm. think okay i'm safe but here at waimea bay you can see how even many seconds after making the drop as you see here these three riders it looks like am i safe am i safe and there's so much uh like blast from 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 the wave that it, it's still like that's just making the drop is just the beginning you just know? the beginning can you get in front of it yeah can you get past that implosion mark and you know these guys equipment everything just is it's, you know it's your life on the line and these guys are just up in the ante these some are doing it to be a hero some are doing it for personal value and just you know absorbing knowledge of big waves i just love hearing the stories of some of these waimea surfers how much time they've put in because a lot of these guys you know there's not a lot of sponsors in it you know and and a lot of these guys work so hard to just you know make this happen for themselves right and it's really cool to see this group you know they're they're taking their big wave surfing into their own hands making this organization so that they have a platform because these guys even though they're doing it for you know what i mean themselves and their surfing and their lifestyle it's their lifestyle you know, they're, they're heavy entertainers on the outside looking, and that's why we're watching this amazing thing go down in history. Big Wednesday, coming right. to you live, Surfline. Yeah, so the group of the 20-plus the crew, you know, they assert that uh, 20 feet is where the big wave riding begins. So mm -hmm. we're saying 20-plus, the emphasis on the plus. Yes, the, emphasis, the, the, the yeah. The 20 is just the, the bar that it starts at, and then everything above that. So... Um, so that's the height, I guess they say, that separates the vast majority of surfers. Yep. Um, so, you know, Waimea, maybe it's 12 to 15, maybe some 18-footers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty heavy, but once it gets to the 20-plus, that's when the crowd sort of thins out a little more and the serious... Yeah, and the serious guys are out there, like, you know, guys like Aaron Gold, LB Lair, Kai Lenny, you know, Mikey Red. Nick Lamb, El Eli Olson, Emily Erickson, just to name a few. I got a long list I'll be reading out all day with Brett Isaiah. John Mel, Justin Holland, uh, Christine DuPont, just, you know, a lot of big wave names. Yeah, we got um, Rothman, Matahi Rothman, Matahi um so many others. And so, you know, it is a little challenging for mm -hmm. us to to identify all the surfers. I yep. I, I thought I saw it look like Makua Kai on uh, on one of those waves where there were three guys on. You, sometimes you can tell the design of the surfers. Oh on the yeah, board. well the, yeah, they're characters in our sport, and they also have their authentic airbrush that we've been you know such fans of watching them. 
you know, Makua Kai, he has that airbrush that you can really tell. He changes it from time to time, but you can tell when it's Makua Kai Rothman. I have a list of Wahines as you see this beautiful drone footage. We're going to be able to see them out there. Aloy Driscoll, she'll be in the bright green board with pink logo, so we'll be looking for her. You have other girls out there, Guarantee, Ira Fritz Gerald, Laura Anover, um, Katie Mai McConnell, Shannon Quirk. Polly Ralda and Kaya Waldman. So yeah, they're um, the girls that are out there in the lineup right now, doing their Red Bull Magnitude. They have all year to turn in some big waves, and that's an amazing thing. Thank you to, to you guys, Red Bull. Mahalo, mahalo. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I think maybe that was a trend that started during you know COVID, where. Yep. It, I saw that you know the triple crown sort of went that direction too, where you'd send in a video clip to, mm -hmm. to as your entry. And so similarly with this, uh, this program here with Red Bull and these women, that uh, they'll be also have that opportunity throughout the year to submit clips. And so today, it's one of those days that they're hoping to get one of their entries in with uh, with a surf here at Waimea. Great shot of the drone here. You can see our surfers. Getting in position on each other. And come on, shoulder hoppers, let these wahines have their 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 clip. Because <laughs> uh, I've been hearing about the carnage out there in the last few swells. And, you know, it's really important to reach deep down inside and know who you are before you go out and partake in, in a discipline like this, big wave riding. It's not for everyone, let me tell you. So to our listeners and viewers who aren't familiar with uh, the word wahine, wahine is a Hawaiian word for woman. And we actually really cool stories, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm a historian. Mm -hmm. I actually got a, my PhD in history from UC Santa Barbara. Uh, I was born and raised in Hilo on the big island of Hawaii. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to, to focus a lot of my scholarship on Hawaiian history, my research and um, and I, I went into a lot of our, our archival materials that looked at Hawaiian, um, what we call them mo'olelo, or stories. It's kind of like legends and um, histories from uh, that were orally um, preserved and then later uh, written down in Hawaiian, olelo Hawaii, the, the name of the language in Hawaii. And what really uh, intrigued me was when uh, when we started digitizing these papers, then you could you could run searches, right? You could run mm -hmm. a word search. And um, so we're very grateful to uh, many of those efforts of, of our researchers who, who digitized a lot of this material. So we learned about a lot of these stories of surfers, uh, even here at the bay. Look at this wave here, we got a rider up. That was a big one, nice takeoff. Would have been really heavy if he was over 10 yards, but I mean, that was just a great, nice wave he rode all the way to Midway Mail inside. Another one behind the boil there. Oh, gets gobbled up on that one. Oh, and you do know, you know, when you're going at speeds like that, um, no matter what you're wearing on you, it, it hurts sliding out like that. And you can get a water enema, which can be very <laughs> dangerous too at this wave. Do we have a green board up? I don't know if that's one of our yeah. wahine out there. So, again, what intrigued me, Ezra, when, when going into these ancient Hawaiian accounts of, of, of Hawaiian society that was preserved in these, um, you know, in written form in Hawaiian language, and run these search, uh, mm -hmm. said, I run a search with He'e Nalu, for example. So He'e Nalu is the traditional name for surfing. It's the Hawaiian name for surfing. Yeah. That's been around for hundreds of years. Um, you know, surfing or Heinalu originated in, in Hawaii and throughout the, the Pacific as well, you know, hundreds and of years ago. And all these um, great stories came up through the search of, of typing in Heinalu. And then there's other word searches you can run, of course. Um, but I'll be sharing some of those mm -hmm. stories with you today. This oh, rich history of, of surfing in Hawaii. And here we have, speaking of which, two riders up. switching over good vibes always 
Always enter lineup with good vibes as we got a rider out the back, grab rail, gets low, holds through the whitewater section, splicing back. And ooh, the board got loose and that's like one of the things and I've been seeing this a lot during since 2019 is people nowadays, they just throw their board and they don't look back. Which so. yeah, can be a, an issue, you know, so. Mm -hmm. That one was, you know, just a, a small little accidente, but, um, you know, I've, I've seen that at Chun's the other week. A set comes in and everybody just throws their boards and doesn't look back. And that's, you know, in our surf communities, it's really got to get touched upon. And, you know, not too many people nowadays, they don't like to get told, you know what I mean? But you're just giving them proper safety criticism. So, right. Very important in these days to uh, instill knowledge where it needs to be before our surf culture gets endangered by, you know, UFOs, so. <laughs> There's a replay of one surfer here in green. Green board. Nice hang on. Oh, airdrop. Waimea Bay is known for the bottom just dropping out on you. And, yeah. And um, it's, a, it's a big wave, but it's a steep wave, so. And then there's, you yeah. know, this section, the boil section, and people try and take off either on it, around it, or behind it. And so everyone's got their technique and their strategy. Um, Eddie Aikau was known for taking off way deep behind the boil often. Yeah. And it's interesting how... And hugging it and, like, right. staying rail engaged, right? Oh, man. Also, that performance of John John 2016, the last the uh, Eddie ran, I feel, I was just talking to this about you, um, the night before session of John John was just on. Real good big wave Waimea surfing. Yeah, I was down here at Waimea the night before and couldn't believe that it, how big it was. Breaking way out in the middle of the bay, just mm -hmm. closing out. So they actually had it on the second day, which was a smaller day, but it was still massive so cool to watch especially um you know that i have a lot of waves that like are embedded in my memory from that one of them was mason ho took yeah. off on that one that was already kind of closing out but he sort of still went and, and backdoored it anyway it was moving angrily the velocity and how vertical that boil bowl was it was hairy also those um you know those those clips of of the water safety when those closeout sets came in, they oh. would have to turn around. You see all of them just ride right up on the sand. I love that. I, I, I asked a bunch of guys that I do know on uh, Uncle Terry's Hawaiian Water Patrol, I asked them about 100 questions about that day. <laughs> it's just so entertaining. Those guys live through it every day. And they got plenty of stories to share with their keiki and to all their surfers. As looks like a wave's approaching because yeah. people are starting to paddle a little bit harder you know they're all trying to be well-mannered out there you know as a surfer how it is <laughs> yeah speaking of lifeguards good friends with joey cadiz who's uh joey aloha he's probably out that there guy, right now yeah and uh lifeguard at waimea bay he's an awesome guy awesome surfer he's actually one of the uh invitees for the event and for i'm the stoked Eddie. for him you know he's he you know he honors his heritage where he's from and uh i almost thought when we got on the mics on i thought maybe we got a glimpse of joey aloha he's been out there surfing some really good sessions and uh to mr owens um hope you get a speedy recovery i know you were out there on that day of karmic carnage where there was a lot of people that shouldn't have been surfing Waimea. Mr. Owens got a nice laceration on his foot. So um, get well, buddy. You're one of our favorites to watch out there, most definitely. And I hope you're watching right now, Surfline, bringing it to you live, 20 plus. Yeah, it's so cool that Surfline teamed up with 20 plus to, to do this. And my understanding is the plan is to follow the surf mm -hmm. and yeah. around the world and yeah we're inviting feeds. we're inviting viewers come join us and celebrate because we're going all the around the world lifetime here lifetime live stream okay we got a wahine right here 
Thank you, Brada, for letting her go. She's working it all the way to the inside bowl. As we got a few surfers out the back, a three pack. Nice cut oh. back, switch over. And uh, that party wave ended better than Polly Ralda with the blue helmet, I believe, and the hot pink vest. Awesome, 20 plus, won't limit itself, a handful of breaks, but instead they'll cover the entire big wave surfing world. So this is an amazing thing happening and we're stoked to be joining you guys today. And uh, sorry the Eddie I cow is off, but we couldn't let this beautiful day of big waves go, Isaiah. So Surfline and Mike Prickett and the team at Salt and Air Studios, you know, they're gonna bring it to you all day long. 20 plus series and we're going to have an amazing group out there that has been formed and thank right. you to Jamie Mitchell and the guys right so the heavy water surf organization formed 2019 and uh, they're going to be taking their own big wave surfing careers into their own hands and if you see this list that's uh, right in front of me and Dr. Walker. I mean, oof, all the names you'd recognize, these guys are all gonna be a part of their own big wave union here since there's go. no big tour. It's a replay of nice wave here. Yeah, he got a Hanaho wave. Is this the Looks guy like earlier? It. Yeah, he's on fire right now. Two Waimea waves in less than 20 minutes, pretty good. Unless that new airbrush is popular, but <laughs> <laughs> this crossover, that was fun. Yeah, that was. In the crowds nowadays, you don't know if they're crossing over or good vibes or crossing over all. Hooey, 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 hooey. Yeah, look at that iconic, right? Waimea Bay, definitely with that tower of the church right there. Um, that's really one of the, the images of, of, of Waimea. It's not only like sure the point in the day, but. 20 foot plus. Yeah, and uh, so. It's interesting that we were talking earlier about there's a parking lot there, and I guess the church's fundraiser is mm -hmm. charging parking, right? Mm -hmm. Normally it's $10, but yep. on the day that they hold the Eddie, somebody said it went up to 100 Oh, yeah, 2016 was 50 now it's like 100 I've seen $150 stalls, and I joke around with the toilet paper rolls sold at the bathroom, 20 bucks last we ran, 2016. And I was joking around because if it was on today, I was joking like 50 to $80 <laughs> toilet paper rolls. How bad you need to use the bathroom. Uh, Maybe there's people going to open up their doors by three tables. Hey, you like, you like use the bathroom. Smart fundraiser though. Never mind selling cookies or cupcakes. <laughs> Parking. Oh, parkings. It's massive. Well, that's yeah, surf line 20 foot plus instead of just 20 plus. Okay. So if you're just joining us, surf line, 20 foot plus, you're watching. And, uh, we got a great day planned out for you as surf line and the heavy water collective of big wave luminaries such as Kai Lenny, uh, Justin DuPont, Billy Kemper, Bianca Valente, Jamie Mitchell, Lucas Chumbo, and many more. Of course, one doesn't have to be a heavy water surf member to be featured. This is an inclusive program and it aims to spotlight the big wave community. So this is just awesome. Right. Good to be involved. Actually, don't mean to correct you, but it's Justine DuPont. Uh, Justine, yeah, okay, so gotcha. we have female servers, which is awesome and part of the celebration that we're doing today with with, uh, with the Red Bull uh, event here. Um, and I was mentioning earlier about these Hawaiian stories these mo'olelo these traditions and one thing that stood out most to me when when going through these archival materials is how many of these stories of surfers were about female surfers women or wahine so super cool that um we're able to still you know recognize and and honor women in mm -hmm. the lineup uh, but just i think maybe a lot of people view surfing as more of a of a masculine thing of a of a male sport which right. i mean pr you know today there probably are more men than women who surf but um traditionally women were very active in in surfing in old hawaii and so in many ways we're circling back to those roots by having mm -hmm. 
our, our women in the last decade or so really kind of step up to the plate. They have been. Charging mm -hmm. big waves. I mean, Kiala Kennelly, if, I believe she's part of this group as well. And big time. Um, and watching, um, you know, I mentioned Bianca Valenti and, and so many others who are on the, on the list mm -hmm. here that, that are, are part of this crew. Um, my hat is off to them. These, these mm -hmm. women charge. We've been trying to get them, you know, equally in, equal pay, the whole nine, because these Wahine, they charge. And this, uh, the Molelos, I remember that you shared with me last year, um, talking about Wahine, was that one that in Kauai, that Wahine, yeah. that became a Wahine surf god, and then the eight rocks that <laughs> made the reef were the eight men. I really like that story. Yeah, yeah, so quite a few. I mean, like I said, there's stories. That one, is a, her name was Kaili. Mm -hmm. Um, here we have a rider up. Let's see if they can handle this rodeo whitewash here. Sometimes you get a widen the stance at that part. But the white water comes bearing down on you. Mm -hmm. He's getting a little bonus glide to this inside as it's, you know, got some hill on it still, still staying steep for him. That inside section, we call it pinballs. Yeah. And you know, I've had amazing sessions at pinballs, you know? following Dwayne DeSoto around and Ross Williams was one of them when he was a young kid. I remember reading up like those guys would play next to the wall and get some barrels. It could be a weird washy wonky wave, but there's some epicness on the inside of pinballs on medium swells, not big white man, but out the back. Oh, is this a uh, poof, a bumpy one. Yeah, backwash can really complicate things. Oh, when you're you can to see survive. the ruts down in the flats too. It's you know they have their work cut out for them. Rodeo ride. Here we go. Oh, nice. Classic Waimea takeoff. As they're both getting mowed over, can they pop out? I've seen like yards of white water, and then they come popping out. So I try not to take my eye off. You never know. How's this back one, Isaiah? Oh. Amazing, yeah. It reminds me of the uh, the winning waves of John John. He dropped down and mm -hmm. it just explode around him, and you'd think he was gone. Gone, and then he'd pop out with the uh, flew from out. the from the white water, and that was not It's hard to. I can't believe that was in 2016. That's been many years. So yeah, right. Another fave was I think it was 2006 or two. Yeah, 2006. Noah Johnson. Really enjoyed that, Eddie. The year Bruce won was a very heavy year, too. A lot of characters. Yeah. Yeah, the year Bruce won. That was when the shore break antics became mm -hmm. kind of a thing, right? Like, you ride it all the way through to this inside and then pull into the shore break closeouts. The Irons brothers were both putting on a show with those. <laughs> Big time, yeah. And there's a story that goes with that, too. Um, what is neat too is what I haven't seen yet today and it's one of the most scary things that can happen to you in any lineup is being too far inside so since right. I've been here this morning I haven't seen a significant like oh we're too far inside and then carnage 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 and then you know and then it gives the water patrol oh man it's just a yard sale out there yeah that every surfer's nightmare right <laughs> being caught inside especially at Waimea Bay holy smokes that's something you don't really want to experience and I want to say just from Salt and Air's drone footage right there that is a killer crew that isn't too elbow to elbow right there that's not too bad yeah we're looking right now toward um, Keiki Beach and Pipeline right, speaking of our water patrol water safety out there keeping our surfers safe and deep Not in there at pinballs right. on. and I want to mahalo see do understand they donated a ski to uh, yeah Curtis Chong Ki mahalo awesome support and uh, thank you see do can't do it without these amazing watercrafts that have been innovated by our uh, watermen over here to become such an amazing 
craft for life saving and to elevate all our surfers. Right. So our surfers see a little bit of movement. Maybe there's a wave in the horizon that they're got their eye on. Just thinking about a bunch of watermen made me think of Ikaika Kalama. Is he going to bring his va out today? Oh. I haven't seen him in a little bit. I was wondering if he ran into him. Another legend. I'm sure some white male surfers like, what is this guy doing out on a canoe? But I'll tell you right now, that's Ikaika Kalama. And uh, that's a lifelong legacy here in the islands. Bugi Kalama's son. Oh, here we go. Three oh, guys beautiful. up. beautiful. All goofy footers. All goofy. They cannot get mad at each other. You cannot see. They're in the goofy foot category together. <laughs> yeah, Ikaika Kalama. He, um, amazing waterman from stand up to regular shortboard to everything. Canoe surfing. So he grew up with him, Big Island, and. Yeah. yeah, amazing. He takes a canoe out here. I don't know if you've seen that footage, but him and Mikey Red and mm -hmm. I think Shaden Picaro and uh, out here. He's a straight waterman. Catching 25-foot waves on a, on a four-man canoe, three or four-man canoe. Yeah, not running away from it, yanking a cut back right back into the bowl. You know what I mean? Yeah, so mahalo to Surfline. Thank you, Surfline. Big time. 20 foot plus, teaming up together to bring this action to all of our viewers from around the world. Those of you who, can't, who aren't in Hawaii have a little bit of opportunity while you're working right now. Yeah. <laughs> and let's take a look at this action. And that's what Surfline's doing, man. They're going to be bringing it to you live with this uh, big wave organization, Heavy Water. So they're going to be, you know, streaming. 20 foot plus is an experience inviting all viewers to join us and celebrate these big wave moments and times. I love this drone footage here of what wow, we're looking up into Waimea Valley. So Waimea Valley, a lot of historic significance to this place mm -hmm. um, from, boy, there's, there's hail up on the top, which is like a... I guess, I don't know, people call it like a temple, but it's really more like a, uh, you know, a sacred place mm -hmm. um, where, you know, this, this hail was built on, on the top of the hill there, and it was a Luakini hail. Luak there's a variety of different hails that were, were built for a variety of reasons. Some of them were built for, like, observing, um, like, uh, studying astronomy, or there was a learning center, or for a place where you would learn more about medicinal plants, but... This one, well, we're, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I think That's we're going to take awesome. a break. We'll just I'm introduce excited. you. We'll talk a little bit more about Waimea Valley and the Heiau, but we're going to take a break and come back to you with more live action in a moment. Yeah. Okay, guys, we'll be right back. So thanks for joining us and stay tuned. A uh, person said, a uh, guy said that he could take me out surfing big waves at Waimea Bay, actually. But he told me to buy a gun. And I was really confused for the longest time. Like, oh, I need a gun? Like, what is that? Like, a gun? Like a shooting gun? And then he started laughing. He's like, go to the, to the surf shop and ask for a gun. <laughs> and I was like, this is so weird. I didn't know what was a gun. But then I bought a 7-2 because the guy probably didn't even want to sell me a gun because I didn't know what a gun was. So then that was my first big wave gun. And then he saw, the guy saw, and he was like, okay, I'll lend you my gun. And that was my first experience. Aloha mai kakou. Uh, welcome to Waimea Valley here. We're looking back into the beautiful valley of Waimea and to the break here at Waimea Bay. Mahalo to thank you for a surf line and 20 foot plus. 
bringing it to you live here, checking out the action. And my name is Dr. Isaiah Walker, and I'm here with Ezra Rodriguez. Aloha. Just bringing to you this live action to celebrate this amazing Big Wednesday swell. Got quite a few surfers in the lineup right now, and we've seen some great waves being ridden already. Mm -hmm. And the conditions are looking pretty good, Ezra. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, you never know on forecasts and stuff like that. You actually show up to the beach and something it does something different. So not as much wind as, uh, you know, expected. And uh, there's still a lot of good rides out there. I'm just glad we're taking advantage of this beautiful day. There was a lot of hype yesterday and everything was going on. And just really stoked that we get to celebrate this day down here at Waimea with Sultan Air Studios, Surfline, Red Bull, Future Fins, Mahalo, and Sea Dew water jet skis. Yeah, so. yeah, I mean, the forecast Surfline is amazing at, at calling these uh, forecasts, and I think they were spot on for today. I think some of the little bit of ambiguity was whether or not we were going to hold the eddy because it was one of those that was kind of like right on the edge of calling it, right? Like right. It was big enough-ish. Um, and the winds were a little from the side, but as the day has progressed, we're seeing the winds shift more from an easterly angle. And um, you can see here, beautiful, you can see the mist blowing off of the, the top of that wave. And so the ideal conditions are lighter winds that are blowing from the east or east, southeast, east, a little bit of north, but too much north, and it makes it a little too sloppy and a little more yeah. challenging. Still really good, why man? Fun. Still a lot of people out there, and we got the wahine, the Red Bull magnitude. There is a few wahines out there. I have the list. We have Aloy Descroll, Hustina, Allo Descroll, Hustina Dupont, Laura and Enver, um, Irie Fritz Gerald, Siri Matterson, Katie Mai McConnell, Shannon Kirk. Polly Ralda and Kaya Waldman. And there's a there's a bigger list of the girls that are in the invitational, but these are the girls that I know of that are in the lineup right now. Looks like the three goofy footer gentlemen from earlier. Right. Huh? <laughs> Sharing. The same guy in the middle is like uh, Yeah. Uh why me? I mean oftentimes you'll see multiple riders mm -hmm. on one wave even like in competition they'll allow for it as long as they're not um you know throwing off anyone or oh, banging each time. other and so in free surfs i really wanted to know how it works because a lot of these guys have respect mutual respect but then sometimes you see where they're really deep and it's like ah he almost made it around but then you know they ride it together aloha gang thanks right. for having us beautiful drone shot of the whole field that's out there right now these are the people that wanted to charge it today big wednesday so yeah, good stuff so, so again um you're joining uh ezra rodriguez Aloha. and isaiah walker grateful for surfline and 20 foot plus uh, for putting this on and um yeah we've got a lot of action we've seen a lot of good waves being ridden we're going to be telling a little bit of story in, in history and culture in between some of these during these lulls. Um, but actually, I'm surprised. Like, it's pretty consistent. Like, every time I start a story, yeah. uh, I, I get cut short because there's there's waves that are out there, um, which is which is a great sign to have that consistency. That is good. And more on the horizon, as you can see, Salt and Air Studios pulling back. And I know we haven't seen the set of the day yet, so I'm super excited to see when that happens. Yeah, I think we're still seeing a, a, a rising swell. So the Surfline is predicting, and rightly so, that just kind of the conditions and the waves improve throughout the day here. So we kind of on hold this morning, just waiting for the right time to bring the live action to you. So I think we're getting the best of it for sure here on on Surfline. Yep, as you can see, a beautiful shot of the pack out there. And that girl out there with the, the blue helmet and the pink vest, that is Polly Ralda. That is one of the Red Bull Magnitude Wahines out there trying to get the Covenant title. So this is, you know, like Isaiah said, it's a filmed event, right? Right. 
you got your filmer, you got your gun, you got your leash, and that's all you need. And you need uh, good spirit and a lot of waterman knowledge, waterwoman knowledge, and you get out there and you get some of the best rides of your life. What a great competition that is. Right. So looking at the beach, a lot of spectators down there, even though the event for the, the eddy isn't going, we definitely have a lot of people though, checking out the big waves and joining us with, with this particular um, you know, program that we're running for you today. And so we're um, you know, excited about this, the, this 20 foot plus gang and the heavy water surf organization. To, I, I like that concept. I mean, as we're, we're learning a little bit more about it with Jamie Mitchell, the concept was to put their careers in their own hands, right? And mm -hmm. so I mean, you'd made reference to some sort of surfer union, but but it is kind of cool to see, you know, big wave surfers wanting to represent themselves in their own way. Mm -hmm. And this is one venue that they're exploring of, of doing. So you can see here the, the lifeguard tower. And mahalo to the lifeguards there at Waimea Bay for keeping everyone safe. And um, Eddie Aikau, speaking of the event named after legendary Eddie Aikau was one of the f one of the first lifeguards mm -hmm. to be to be stationed there at Waimea Bay. So a lot of history and a lot of memory there. If you go down to the beach park at Waimea Bay, there's a um, uh, you know plaque that commemorates him and his accomplishments. There's a replay here. One of our riders looks like one of Makua's boards, honestly, as he dropped down. It's not Makua, but might have been one of his old guns. Now we're looking towards Kaena Point. Our drone now circling around. So we'll give you the kind of 180 degree spin there of the bay and what it's like in beautiful Hawaii in Waimea. We we're talking about Wahine. And one of my stories I started off, we'll, s we'll see if I can mm -hmm. finish, but uh, Kaili o Kalawa Kekoa, that was her name. She was this powerful woman um, who was surfing on in mm -hmm. Hawaii. And this is one of the, the stories of, of uh, Hawaiian antiquity and and big waves big right? waves yeah. and so she had this thing where she was she had all these these attendants with her, like these female uh, kind of daughters I guess like people that she hung out with mm -hmm. her crew mm -hmm. and she was hoping to get them to to, to move on with life and mm -hmm. to, so she arranged this these marriages with these surfers at the beach uh, Makaiva is the name of the beach and the legends the stories there and um, and so she pairs them up with these surfer guys and hopes that these women will will mm -hmm. be taken care of. Uh, but one by one, each of these guys decides to sort of back out of this commitment to these women in the surf. So she sees this, and after recognizing that there's only one guy that stays with one of the, the women, and so mm -hmm. she sees all these other guys, and she sees them one day surfing. So she paddles out to the lineup mm -hmm. and says, hey, guys, mm -hmm. why do you guys do me like that? Right? She's yeah, upset. Yeah. She's like, yeah. I tell you what, I challenge you guys right now. I remember that. To yeah. the surfing competition. Mm -hmm. And they're like, all right, well. And, and and this is something that I think people should understand. Surfing wasn't just a part of the culture of Hawaii, but it was also competitive. So it there was. was a lot of stories of surfing competition, and they would often like, would bet things. You'd gamble over it. Mm -hmm. So they're like, all right, what are we betting? What's, what's the, what is at stake here? And she's like, your bones. So... We have a rider up on a smaller inside one, but in Hawaiian society, we believe that the mana or your spirit resided within your bones, kind of like the marrow of your bones is where your spirit was housed. And yeah. you could take someone's mana or their spiritual kind of entity by taking their bones. And so, if you look at a lot of old Hawaiian like uh, weapons and and jewelry and things like that that they wore. Someone else's bones. There's on bones there, yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. So she's like, your bones are at stake, and then they're like, all right, okay, I guess mm -hmm. to the death. Mm -hmm. She had this um, this chant or this oli that she did that made her the kind of this kind of a, a supernatural power that she had, where she could mm -hmm. summon like tidal waves. So uh, there's this chant called the Pohue Hue. Pohue Hue is the name of this vine that grows along most of the shorelines in Hawaii. It's a, mm -hmm. a green uh, vine with a beautiful purple flower. It's called pohoe hoe. And so she grabs this pohoe hoe vine, starts whipping the water with it and summoning like a tidal wave. 
So this massive wave comes, and these men, as we see mm -hmm. here, massive kinds of waves. It takes a certain type of person mm -hmm. with the kind of courage to surf massive waves like this. And she, she was the only one amongst them that had the courage to surf these massive 50-foot type waves. She wave. called them out, yeah. And basically, she caught the wave. The others were destroyed in the wave. On the inside. And they never, none of them re-emerged from the whitewash, right? So we're watching today some yep. people getting blasted by whitewash, and we're grateful we have water safety and everybody to make sure that people mm -hmm. come up. But in this story, these nine gentlemen never re-emerged from that massive wave. And so they're, if you go to this beach in Koi, um, there's Ooh, chicken skin, because yeah, I know the story you told me. Yeah, yeah, there's these stones, these kind of reef heads that are, so you know, kind of representative of that story that tell mm -hmm. the story of like, and it's a reminder, right? Most of these mo'olelos, they're, yeah. they're reminders to us of what kind of ways that we should behave properly. Yep. And um, kuleana is a Hawaiian word that means sort of your responsibility, your stewardship. So it's a story about us of being good stewards of what we're given as our part of our stewardship right and uh, so Kaili had given these women to these men and she felt like they had not fulfilled their responsibility to them mm -hmm. and so the end result was they got demolished by these massive waves and they're a part of the reef in Kauai part of the reef so because they wanted to be playboys <laughs> <laughs> that was you as right? <laughs> not even he's telling us some stories just joking no but that's an awesome story though I I yeah, and then you can find some of these stories in your book, Waves of Resistance. You guys go check that out. Isaiah Walker, he's not just a professor or a doctor. He is also an amazing author and super cool. Every year around this time, I get to sit with you in a booth and, and um, you know, you give us all this amazing lana'o about our Hawaiian culture. I've learned so much from you. Thank you. Mahalo, oh, cool. Isaiah. Yeah, so I'm um, grateful to be here once again at Waimea, a uh, beautiful place. I also was talking about uh, the valley when the, when the drone was showing shots of Waimea Valley, mm -hmm. and up on the top of Pupukea, um, there's a heiau up there. Yeah. And I was mentioning that a heiau is kind of like a, a shrine of sorts. There's different types of heiau mm -hmm. in Hawaii, but one of the, like during time of war, uh, a, t a heiau would be, uh, certain ones would be designated as luakini heiau, which were dedicated to uh, to ku. Ku is usually the god of war. Yep. Um, there's different uh, manifestations of ku, but nonetheless, this, this heiau up here above Waimea, and you, and you can actually go and visit it. In fact, I encourage those that are on the North Shore to go and check it out. Uh, up above, behind Foodland, you follow that road. Here we have a rider, beautiful wave. All by himself. Hard section to ride out of, you know, to complete your wave, just oh, for your own personal. Here we that. go. This is a Waimea oh. wave, and that is a Makua Rothman airbrushed board. I wonder if that's Makua. That one actually looks more like him, the it earlier does. rider. The earlier rider didn't, and I believe that is that Makua. Is Makua. I yeah, tell. I can tell because of the stance. This guy absolutely charges. He is an entertainer, a father, a big wave rider. Another bomb behind it. Nice. That wave looked a little more proper than some of our earlier ones. That one had a, a real. Yeah, and he's still got a lot of um, transition on it as he makes his way to the inside. Oh, still going. He's going to pull up. Oh, Marvin Foster on the left. Oh, wait. No, that's the inside short yeah, break. That's Excuse the short me. Break. First guy I seen go through the short break. Oh, no joke, right up to the beach. Awesome. That's super cool. Um, you know, just going back, um, talking about the Eddies, you know, Uncle Michael Ho had one of the most amazing uh, shore break ones. And then, oh, you yeah. know, listening to Bruce's interview when he won, he describes of, okay, I was just emulating yeah. Uncle Mike. I went in there, I felt a little bit, oh, I shouldn't do this, but he did it. Working it. Small kind Huntington, Huntington hop to the inside. 
I'm not too sure who that is on the blackboard. It oh. almost like a little bit style when he's doing it. It almost looks like Ivan Florence, but I'm not oh. sure, you know? I'd have to get a full wave of watching him. Yeah, you don't see the Huntington hump at Waimea very often. Oh, I know, I know, but that guy's always hunting something. He's always elevating surfing, too, that Ivan Florence. Getting that double up at pinball. Yeah, he's like, oh, you want to go into the shore break? I'll get into the shore break as well. These guys always elevate oh, here. We go. Oh, three guys up. Nope. Two. Beautiful. The guy on the green board, he came flying in a few knots already before the guy even caught it. So. Oh, that looks like one of our Wahine yep, surfers. That looks like one of our Wahine surfers. It does. That was awesome. That was a nice set. There were quite a few waves ridden in that set. And. Especially that way from Makua, you can see the bottom drop out on it. That was a, that was a sick one. That was from the right it all the way to the shore break too. Pretty, pretty cool. He had a nuts one in 2016. Him and Kala Alexander. Oh, they were. Heavy. Did you? I kept uh, rewinding it because these guys are brothers. You know what I mean? But I was like, oh, they were going for the same wave. Crossed over. Oh, each other. crossed over. And I believe Kala went over on that. That was like some spooky stuff. That was a good one, though. And they they went right back out. You know what I mean? That, that kind of donuts would take a regular human to the beach. No, paddle right back out. That's why I always, all these years, growing up um, on Quicksilver for 22 years, just going to a lot of the Eddie I cows, um, Ross Clark was always one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. The kind of, I mean, it was almost underrated. The kind of stuff that he got you know, he got three or four waves on the head and he still finishes his heat. Amazing. Here we go. That's the drone shot of that last one, which we believe is Makua. Yeah, that's a bomb. Yeah. yeah. Can't even see the whole wave. It's really dropped under Makua, sea level. shoot me a text if you're <laughs> at your house, but we believe that you're out surfing right now. We're gonna see. We see how he managed to Huntington hop his way through to the shore break on this one. No, this thing is actually just giving him that inside section, huh? Yeah. Oh, he knows where to go. There's like only a few pathways that's not gonna give you any resistance into the shore break. And look at him go. Oh, he's getting that bonus ball way up on the tip, going past the crease. Oh, that is McCool. Yeah. And that's the moment we were contemplating, like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Do I keep riding this through to short break? Or? <laughs> exactly. But you know him. That guy's an entertainer. He was ready for the thing to bowl up, maybe do a little fade, grab rail. That was that him. him. There he is. And who is that? Oh, that's um, that's one of these young brothers from Kauai. But yeah, what yeah. great camaraderie when you make it to the beach and talk about it with your friend. You see the equipment here. I know that, you know, he's riding a quad. Some people ride single fins, some people ride three fins, but the quad uh, is also kind of a popular choice these days, both of them with quads. He has like less drag, mm -hmm. you get a lot more speed and make it through that white water section. I want to say the last four eddies over the last four years at the ceremonies, I want to say everybody's gun is a quad. Mm -hmm. It just like took off. Yeah, Makua. Good stuff, Makua. Julio Heinalu, Tractor Surfboards by Jason Stevens. Yeah, he's like, bro, I got the wave of the day so far. I'm gonna go eat lunch, maybe paddle back out later. Guarantee. Kind of cool. He's also a public servant. Like he's mm -hmm. run for office recently, mm -hmm. and um, so really appreciate like contributions to community efforts and functions. And so big time. He's know. also really good to our youth. He guides all the kids in the right direction. You know, with a lot of kids in our surf community, all you guys got to do, you know, guys need help. Just ask one of your uncles. You know what I mean? We're one big surf Ohana internationally. And 
and that's why it's super cool. Guys like um, Zach Porter and Jamie Mitchell, 2019, taking their careers into their own hands, you know, because big wave surfing after that amazing thing with Gary Linden and these guys had a tour. Somehow some things happened and uh, now they don't have a huge platform, just a few events and these guys are next level, should be paid up the wazoo. I mean, this is big wave riding, you know? There's uh, athletes at $20 million can't even paddle 10 feet past a rock wall at the natatorium. So that just goes to show you no disses, you know what I mean? Running on the field, all, everything's different, but these guys are surfing um, the moving momentum of the ocean, reef, you know, what have you. It's, it's, it's a dangerous sport. Yeah, riding mountains. This looks like one of our wahine surfers on maybe hopefully on the list for our Red Bull Yes, it does, and I believe that was one of the Wahines from the beginning part, too. She caught a wave earlier as she, well, oh, she's giving it up. She loves it. Can she make it into the vessel in the shore break on this one? No, not quite. It's not going to let her, but hey, hands up. My hands there are up go. for her. She just went all the way into Piddly's. Good stuff, girl. Applause for you. Sure. Yeah, so those big, like you talk about pinballs, like they call it that, you know, like mm -hmm. the pinball machine, mm -hmm. right? When the, you release the pinball, it bounces off of all yep. of those things. Yeah. That's what those big boulders, man, massive boulders out there. So that's what the reference is for the name pinballs. You don't want to pinball your body. Oh, I bet. No, section. no. You know, and sur surfing next to rocks like that, there's always a different kind of current. The water's churning different. can make you feel that your strong arms are absolutely nothing and take you somewhere you don't want to go that's for sure but pinballs on an in-between day when it's not too a big enough for Waimea and a great angle at 10 feet that wave actually gets fun on the inside there's the girls oh, a lot of women out there yeah yep it looks like the girls that I do have on my heat sheet they're all out there there's Makana Makani Edric yeah, out funny. there on the purple board. She's also a great martial artist. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you want to tango. <laughs> tango with her. Also, Wahine, of, uh, one of my favorite servers, Kaimana Henry. He's probably watching her from the beach or over at the Volcom house. And yeah, man, she can charge. Out there with her is Laura and Ever. Out there in yellow, Irie Fritz Gerald in the orange, yellow rails, blue suit, and Quicksilver vest. We also have Siri Matterson out there in the orange board, black Patagonia suit, Katie Mai McConnell, turquoise board, tie-dye arms, white helmet. So we'll be looking for these Wahines. Also, Polly, uh, Polly Ralda, you can see her. Uh, she's got the blue helmet with the hot pink uh, wetsuit on. Uh, we got Kaya Waldman, very light purple board with black Patagonia suit. So, whew, 20 foot plus Red Bull magnitude, bringing it to you live thanks to Surfline and Salt Air Studios. I'm really glad that the day didn't fizzle out and nothing didn't happen. You know, it's cool that we're having a big expression session out there. Yeah and take advantage of the waves because we never know if um, things will materialize on the 22nd. Right, right. And I mean, there's we've already seen a lot of massive swells. I mean, California was hit by some really extra large um, surf recently. Did you see San Diego Blacks? I mean, I was like, I had to ask my Ruthie, hey, where is that? Is that here? She's like, no, that's San Diego. I mean, they got an amazing swell, like all the way through up the northern coast, right? right. Yeah, and Surfline was on point with that one calling that forecast and so i think this is a this this winter has a lot of energy to it Ooh. oh nice, nice takeoff just popping off Bottom right off turn. the takeoff and oof had that aggression on the takeoff the confident pump the board right. i like that yeah that wave did have a little too much chop though huh yeah yep but the way he took off was like okay i'm ready for this chop and uh, we have a lot of uh, big wave 
contingency and athletes from Santa Cruz and uh, I hope all your families are safe I seen some of the aftermath of uh, that flood and oh boy I hope you guys are okay and for those of you in the islands welcome thanks for joining us all you uh, Eddie I cow invitees I know you guys were ready it must have been a restless night for them oh. yeah, last night I mean everybody prepares different but it's definitely something to talk about because there's so much funny in the preparation seriousness superstition I mean mm. a lot of things yeah I think even um, you know we've I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about too like the or the, the energy of Waimea Bay especially when it's big like this mm -hmm. and I think Greg Knoll uh, used to describe it when they would come down here in the in the 50s and late 50s, early 60s, and just the the that you talk about sort of this energy that's a little unsettling, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of like the the mana of the place is very powerful. I talked about the heiau a little bit. Yep. I've never finished that story, but I'll get to that in a moment. But just all those forces, there's a lot of like energy. Oh in yeah. Yeah. Like the water is mm -hmm. just got a lot of power to it um, the kind of spiritual folklore that surrounds the area mm -hmm. um, just uh, and a lot of that's just kind of contributes to a little the to the um, uncertainty of it all and unsettlingness of it all but we'll we'll we're gonna take another break Ezra and get back to you with some of these this awesome wave action and right. we'll see you after the break right on guys stay tuned Safety is key in these big wave sports is adrenaline, whatever. And you know what? Nothing's 100%. It's like you're giving yourself to the gods when you go out there, basically. And so coming home is a big deal. And it's like not everybody comes home. When you see the wrong stuff a lot, you start wanting to prepare for that because you're only preparing for the goodness, you know? And so that's why they have brag. And So with big waves comes a big risk. And that's why we love it. Welcome back. Glad you're with us here with the uh, Surfline and 20 foot plus. We're here at Waimea Bay on this beautiful day on Big Wednesday, looking back into the valley of Waimea and you can see to the bottom of your screen there, Waimea Rock. It's interesting, that's like a 25, 30 foot rock that usually people are jumping off of it. Yeah. Not, not today, because the waves today. are crashing right over that big rock. Maybe Mason Hall gonna try something. <laughs> Maybe. Off the rock. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen a lot of great waves being ridden. There's a lot of women out there in the lineup who are part of the Red Bull Magnitude competition where they're uh, trying to get some clips that they could send in to as an entry to uh, a, a kind of a wave of the winter for Wahine mm -hmm. and big wave surfing. We're also teamed up with, um, you know, with 20 foot plus and also um, the, the, the crew of uh, Heavy, Heavy Water. Water Surf Organization. And they're they're out here celebrating, taking advantage of of this what big Wednesday swell that uh, you know a lot of surfers did travel here in anticipation for the Eddie Aikau event, mm -hmm. and the conditions weren't just perfect for that event. And it looks like they're looking to the horizon for some possible dates, and Surfline will help us in that forecast of getting the right day. But nonetheless, the waves are still pumping, yep. and so we're able to take advantage of this opportunity and bring to you live this action here from Waimea Bay. Amazing day of big wave surfing. That's what we're here for. 20 foot plus the new series brought to you by Surfline and Heavy Water Surf Organization by Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter. So you're going to see a bunch of Wahines out there and this Heavy Water Surf Organization along with a bunch of free surfers. So we're just celebrating the day of big waves 
So me and Isaiah Walker will be calling the shots all the way through. We also have Wahine out there like Makani Edric. You got people in the magnitude, uh, Red Bull magnitude like Paige Elms. You got Aloe Discroll out there with Laura Enever, Irie Fritz-Gerald, Siri Matterson, Katie McConnell, Shannon Quirk, Polly Ralda, and Kaya Waldman along with a few that might have paddled out. Still been looking on the horizon for Kiala Kenley's added to this list, along with Nakia, um, so many, Kelta, O'Rourke, Sylvia, Nabucco. So, wow, a lot of names I've heard before. Really exciting to see some of these Wahine surf for my first time witnessing. Yeah, we've seen some, um, some awesome waves being ridden so far. Uh, we saw Makuakai Rothman on a on one of the waves of the day, riding it through all the way to the yep. shore break. And so there's a lot of waves out there, and it, it's great to see this consistency. So we're, we're, we're getting to see a lot of action. Yeah, I know if it was competition, Makua Rothman is uh, first in the expression session with the ride through to the shore break. <laughs> oh, here we go. Look at this one. You see this one standing up. Ooh, Ooh no, no takers. Not even a shoulder hopper. They're repositioning as they see something over this hump. Awesome to see YMA from drone footage. Yeah. Almost makes it look a little bit smaller than it does <laughs> until you see the thing jack up. And when it looks big from the drone, you know that wave is giant. Yeah, perspective makes a difference, right? The worst perspective, is, or the perspective that's the most frightening is when you're lying down on the surfboard looking up, and then you realize, oh boy, this is a mountain in front of me. Look through there, right through those two wahenas, it almost looks like that is Joey Aloha over there, Joey Caddis, sitting on the inside. And everybody has their different takeoff zones, you know? And it's also adjusted with comfort level. A lot of the experienced Waimea riders will just do what, you know, Ben Ipa coached so many years. Why are you guys paddling so far out and paddling, paddling, making all this splashing when you can consistently turn around, one, two, three, boom, you're up, right in the scoop. So every surfer is different, sets up different, positions different as we got, ooh, one just rolling by on its own medium looking one. Ah, Ben Ipa, yeah. I'm glad we're, you know, a lot of that generation is getting that age where they're mm -hmm. moving on to the next yeah, realm. Yeah, I know. And, you know, um, what legend, ben, ben Ipa surfed these big waves. He was out mm -hmm. there. I mean, people talk a lot about Eddie Aikawa. Of course, we celebrate him, but mm -hmm. Ben Ipa was right alongside him in some of these um, he you know, was in the 70s and then. but he also coached so many of us in the generations you know what i mean and i know not just my generation he would talk to other generations about you know he would ah, i think that's joey right there that is joey there joey. we go joey caddis so stoked for him to so get invited he, i mean he's always been on this you know if you think about Joey Caddis, you know, being a lifeguard, everything, everything, he's so grateful and thankful for, and he really takes it seriously. But you gotta, you gotta has. say it with a Filipino accent. Cadiz. Cadiz. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guy is an absolute character. You guys all know him. Bro, he's a hammer. Though. Yeah, he is. He, win he goes and travels, and he does these um, traditional, like, lifting competition like yes. strongman for the islands I yes. think he goes down to tahiti he's been to a lot of the islands they do it here at waimea valley yeah, as well part of the rain energy drink right family. they pick yeah. up these huge boulders yep and lift it up over their shoulder here's a wave i see him at buffalo's opening ceremony all the time lifting massive rocks in malo too yeah if you don't know what malo is it's the hawaiian uh, loincloth it's a hawaiian speedo g-string yeah and he's been like at these strongman events too. And this guy, that's about his three, third, fourth wave in this session. And uh, now I'm starting to see that is the same guy with the fluorescent green board. Good yeah. on you. I'd like to get a close up of you. No, because I know Joey and um, respect him a lot. And, and uh, he was going through graduate school and I sort of kind of helped mentor some of his work that he was doing. And we teamed okay. up and I was running like a a community kids program called Halau Nalu where we we're helping kids who didn't really have a lot of um, accessibility to the ocean you know and surfboards and stuff like that but he 
I love he just took it on like when I w you know when I was getting really busy with mm -hmm. my work at, at, at the university stepped in and like just kind of cool. ran it for us and that's where I met him coming to my dad's nonprofit surf rider spirit sessions he came in and he was the main um, youth mentor right for a couple of years he's good loves the the youth I mean, because I know him, I know he had a, a maybe a public service announcement he posted on his Instagram. I guess um, just to be careful when you're out there in the bay. He's a he's a lifeguard, right? Yes. And you're talking and about last week's carnage. Yeah, and yep. he. I mean, he's the mellowest dude around. Mm -hmm. Very cool, but he People was kind of upset. Like, look, yeah. this was very dangerous. And so if you're, you know, if you're watching this on Surfline right now, it's amazing. We're glad at Surfline, but maybe it's best to watch it at yeah. Surfline, you know, because I mean, if you're not experienced you, and, and you just think, well, I can do this, um, and then it becomes a hazard to yeah. the other surfer. He is so humble. I seen him taking off on bombs that day, just getting burned. You know, I, there's a lot of Waimea wave sharing, but when you're starting to burn guys like that, and then Chris Owen, Owens got hurt from deep. I don't know if you've seen that one. Legendary Chris Owens took off deep where he usually takes off at Waimea. He rode the wave. There was like a Sunday kind of out of town guy dropping down. Someone bailed the board in front of him. He hit him. Chris Owens tried to ignore everything about it and he got the carnage. Huge laceration on the bottom of his foot. So Yeah, I mean, I mean we saw the other day at Pipeline, right? We saw two pretty serious oh, injuries. Yep. And our heart goes out to the family but we're good i'm happy to hear that uh, both mm -hmm. bullet and makamai de soto are, are doing better but mm -hmm. i mean we're talking about these kind of powerful waves here on the mm -hmm. north shore it's no joke and it, it can be dangerous yeah. so we want to make sure people are safe and make sure you know you know a little more before you just go out right yeah makamai de soto i didn't even know that until last night full-on hammer I watched him sit underneath the Hawaiian Water Patrol tent, and then, you know, like I told you this morning, he had internal bleeding and whatnot. So, hey, Makamai, I hope you're healing up. Godspeed, buddy. Along with you, Bullet, I wouldn't have known you were injured because uh, Hawaiian Water Patrol is so fast. I seen you look over the balcony, and then we knew Bullet Obra. So, you guys, thanks for the hard charging at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. We should be on again maybe tomorrow, depending on how big it is. Right. So, yeah. Well, maybe while there's a little bit of break, go back to my uh, story about the, the heiau up at the top mm -hmm. of, of Pupukea there. Why may I run the top of the valley there? It's a, it's a marker for um, a, a moku. So Hawaii in traditional times had, had and still today, we have mm -hmm. these, these land divisions. So you have an ahupua'a, which is basically like your village, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of cool in Hawaii we still use some of those same names for mm -hmm. example I live in Haula and Haula is also the name of the, the traditional village of the Ahupua'a mm -hmm. and it went along uh, rivers the, the usually the river was the marker for the divide but then a larger district um, was a moku and that moku is called Ko'olauloa and Waimea Bay is the end of that marker for uh, for Ko'olauloa so if you go north so everywhere from Waimea Bay up through pipeline and around the corner all the way to mm -hmm. um, Kualoa Ranch that's that district of that moku is called Ko'olauloa. That's so one moku. That's one district. Okay. okay, and then Wailua is the next one, which goes from Waimea Bay all the way around Ka'ena Point, right? So Wailua is a, a big... Wow, okay, so those districts are bigger than I thought then. Yeah, I mean, okay. we today we use them different. Like when people talk about Wailua today, they're talking about the town. Okay. But, you know, traditionally Wailua was the, um, was that, that dis a larger land district that was made up of multiple ahupua'a that, it, that was, Waimea Bay was the marker for that land division. So, so anyway, that heo was, was, was a marker, but it was also as a luakini heo, um, there it was dedicated to the god Ku of war. And so during time of war, you would have a, an offering that would be a sacrifice, whether it's a, a pig or an animal, but mm -hmm. in extreme times, even a, a human. Okay, um, gotcha. And so, that's where you know maybe there's some kind of heaviness to the energy of that place and having a little kini heyo up there um, but uh, I, i've also heard stories from some of our kupuna that that the hail over here is also it's one of the um kind of a beacon to communicate with Kauai, the island of Kauai. oh interesting because it's across the channel from here if you look straight out here we have a, a drone shot so the hail would be up to see the 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 chapel there is on uh, the church building 
right up above on that hill there, right on the edge where the road is um, up on top there, the hail. It's a great lookout point, a great place to go. In the movie North Shore, they did something that you should not do, which is in the movie North Shore. Mm -hmm. Remember North Shore, the movie? Uh, classic movie, by the way, but Kiani goes up there and she grabs one of the rocks off yeah, the hill. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. She wraps it up with tea leaf and mm -hmm. puts it back. Mm -hmm. And so I think because of that movie, you'll see a lot of these rocks are wrapped in tea leaf here. Mm -hmm. That's really not something traditional. Oh, look, we're, we're actually going to see it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, so we're, we're actually looking hey, now you, right, you yeah. right at the at the hail, um, and you see that, that rectangular shape, and that's all rock wall, and the, the, this, this hail is a structure. This is fantastic. Great job, oh, yeah. Salt and Air Studios. Um, and so up there, you see, so you can park up there. There's cars, and you can go I walk around. I haven't been up there in ages, but, Isaiah. Yeah, it but looks you don't. Different. Ah, it's so cool. And so you can you can see the structure. So it was a platform structure where there'd be layers. And on, in traditional times, you would have had um, like halles or buildings. A oh, whole. Look oh, at this. Oh, ball. that was a that was a good one. Right there, that's Hawaii Luna in Hawaii. We're looking at the hail, and then the bomb just oh. came. In. Yeah, and you never hear the the stories after you take the rock. Everyone's different. Every situation is different. And then you wrap it with the tea leaf, the after stories of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there is, you guys, it is true. There is a return policy for rocks at a lot of hotels. My mom used to run the hotel business. And let me tell you, there is a return. And there also has been questions, uh, you know, like tons of questions. Like, oh, I went to a hey and I did this. What do I do? Oh, I don't know about that. You didn't take a rock? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, um, so Luakini Heo, um, one of the more, I mean, there's, a, there's several in Hawaii. One of the, probably the most popular and famous one um, is Pu'u uh, Kohola, which is, uh, Kohola is a whale. And so it's kind of, it looks like a whale. It's such a massive structure. And it's on the big island in Kauai Hai. And okay. King Kamehameha built that. He wasn't king just yet when he built it, but he was a chief that was, um, it built this massive, massive heiau uh, and all made from stone. So these stone rocks, they, they would this dry, is the dry one stack like them. A fortress. It looks like a fortress. It looks like a fortress. Yeah. And it, it's dry stacked. In other words, no cement. Nothing. And so you build this just with and interlock. There's a real cool, you know, kind of art to it mm -hmm. of building these structures with, with dry stacking rocks. Um, so anyway, so Waimea has that aura and it has that mana to it. Well, um, there's even a story of a guy named William Gooch, who was one of the first uh, Europeans that was came over here and then during Cook's um, group that came here to Hawaii mm -hmm. in, in the 1770s, you know, many years ago, centuries ago. But there's a story of William Gooch coming to shore here and uh, got into a scuffle with the Hawaiian warriors out here and Looks was like killed. Yeah. And so there is like this um, kind of mana to this place, there's this energy, this that uh, contributes kind of the, the mystery or the mystique of the wave. And here's a way deep, way deep wave. He's setting up to See get if he can make this. Oh, he rolled he, up the windows. <laughs> you gotta Isaiah. tell him, roll them down, not yeah. up. I mean, just to counterbalance, <laughs> roll them down. Maybe we, we learned that through Kainoa McGee. Maybe Rocky if you Hill. roll, maybe with your right hand, you roll it mm -hmm. up and the left hand down. I wonder if you can do that. I can't even do that. <laughs> I'd be in here just trying it in the booth and I couldn't do it. Um, any th any knowledge over um, the the heiau that's underneath the water over there, beneath yeah, Kohala? Yeah, I yeah. got to surf over there, and then someone told me about that. It would change my whole session. Well, here's a replay. Let's see this. See how he's kind of backdooring it and yes. explodes. Here he goes. Oh, oh and then he gets a little, back. you know. And the arms doing the circles, the rolling up the window. You don't want to leave your board too much and fall down on your butt like that. Is is a rider? Wow, it's one of our wahine, is that? Yeah, cutting back to the inside. Nice. Oh, here we go. I think that was Kaya Waldman. And this is our guy in fluorescent green gun who got some amazing waves earlier. So that last wave by that Wahine, 
believe that was a very light purple board with the black Patagonia suit. I think that was Kaya Waldman. Oh, surfing look at this in the one. magnitude and Here's these one. Wahines are just surfing for fun. Beautiful takeoff spot. Nice drop. See if they can hold on through this rodeo section. That's an implode. Gets into a kind of a shouldery. But beautiful ride. Ooh, out the back, you wouldn't want to be on that clapper. I'm glad people are playing a clean game today. I haven't seen any yard sales yet. And it's nice, I mean, uh, we're talking about 2016, the last time that Eddie ran, how there were some rogue closeout sets that made oh it man. entertaining. But today there is, a, there is a bit of a channel, which is nice for our surfers and for our water rescue, um, Hawaiian Water Patrol and the lifeguards and so forth who are out there. So, um, well, this season is probably bringing up questions about 2016. They're probably asking Uncle Terry and them, remember that year? And then the, with the questions, because these guys had to outrun some sets, oh, go yeah. all the way back out to the lineup. Uncle Clyde, everybody was out there in that heat and they had to just make sure everybody was okay. Yeah. That's why the world's best, man. They get fed situations never seen before, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah, they take a, it upon themselves, and they do a great job. Hell of a job, gang. If you haven't heard of uh, the Hawaiian Water Patrol, go check them out. I know there was a short documentary they did, a video. I saw it on Surfline, actually, of uh, Uncle Terry and their crew, and just the kind of the origins of the Hawaiian Water Patrol. They're really at the forefront of water rescue with, with water safety craft, like with jet skis and stuff. Here comes a wave. Oh. Our goofy footer didn't quite make that drop on the, no. the deep side, but we have another rider here. No short break for you on that one. Nope. But nice try. Yeah, him and Uncle Brian, man, the Waterman's Guild. Those guys just keep uh, innovating water rescue on the jet ski. Even yeah. this, this, you know, you see all the mm -hmm. skis these days that have what they call a sled behind it. Mm -hmm. That That started off with them just brainstorming with like a, a bully board like you know those big yep. boogie boards you guys ride on Mokoha side yeah it's the the extra large boogie yeah yeah like the bully board yeah you know. and Dean then Marzol helped out with that right created and then the they, back. they just kind of experimented with it and now it's like it's required almost like everyone that's in water safety that that uh that sled and then the back there is just essential to water rescue Yep, and they always got one Hawaiian Water Patrol guy on that on that bodyboard ready to scoop you up and clamp you right to that bo bodyboard oh. and take you in safely. As you can kind of see, that wind has mm. picked up a little bit when little you see bit. a board spinning like that. But the good news is it's blowing from a better direction than it yep. was this morning. Some of the founding members. He also got a title like Makua, and um, Billy Kemper is uh, what do you call Twiggy Baker? Grant Twiggy Baker. He also got uh, Jamie Sterling on this list. Hard charging Jamie Sterls from North Shore. Jojo Roper. Yeah, Jojo Roper. John Mel. Frank Solomon. So. I was talking to. Uh, Carlos Kaipo. Burley. I think my friend Kaipo Guerrero. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I called him up. I was like, hey, how's it going? He's like, oh, what, the Eddie tomorrow? I was like, oh, they just called it off. He was like, oh, my poor, poor Pete Mel friend. Apparently he just jumped on the plane. Oh, and, uh, the Condor. Uh, I'm sure a few people had that experience when they're on the plane coming to Hawaii. And then if you had uh, the internet on the plane, you found out on on the plane that we weren't running. Oh, uh, no ways. He's usually here around this season anyways, but I know what you mean. He's also a part of our heavy water surf. But members. no loss. I mean, there's a lot of good waves, so um, hopefully you're out there able to get some good ones today. Peter Mel is really good. You've seen what happened. What was that? Last year I was watching, I think it had, a, had to do with surf line. It was Jamie Mitchell on the jet ski at Mavericks, and then Condor got that wave. You oh, seen that? that oh, was that was just breathtaking. Then watching everybody's phone clip off the jet ski, every angle was just radical. He waited his whole life for that. 
uh, just the way he I mean because when you watch Mavericks it's just like it's so steep that one bull mm -hmm. section it's hard to like backdoor it in yeah, any he way but he backdoored it. it oh and it's just perfection and he, would, he was like but if you watch it in slow-mo like he catches a, a rail a little bit mm -hmm. on that bottom and for a brief moment it was like almost death you know what i mean no, like, no, no. oh yeah had, yeah had you he not recovered from that little in another dimension he, he hits that <laughs> wrinkle and goes somewhere else no let me tell you i've totally <laughs> seen that too i rewound that a couple times in another dimension i love that even watching uh marvel lately maybe oh no no i mean just there, there, there's things you know <laughs> peter mel made it right through there i know a wrinkle could just you know and you know some of these guys you know when oh, they make look mistakes at this. Look at this. oh this is a girthy one. Oh, no one wanted that one ah someone could have got a big pocket ride that was a steep one Yeah, you know, some of these guys are really passionate about their surfing. You know, they end up, like, hitting a bump on the wave, getting donuts, and yelling underwater about their performance. I mean, where do you even get the air for that? Oh, oh here we go. Let's see if this one doubles up. We got somebody real deep back real there. Real deep, but kind oh, of perfect. Kind of frothy. Ooh, Ooh. nice. Ooh, he had some... He had a board there, which is scary when someone just leaves their board out like that in your track. But almost makes you get where you want to go, you know what yeah. I mean? You do not want to get clipped in the shin by someone's gun. So if you're just joining us, this is Surfline and 20 foot plus. So Surfline 20 foot plus, bringing it to you here live, Waimea Bay on the island of Oahu, in the district of Ko'olauloa. Right on the edge there between Ko'olauloa and uh, Wailua. Anyway, Waimea Bay, beautiful place here on the North Shore. We have a big Wednesday, 20 foot plus surf today. Mm -hmm. And uh, really stoked that Surfline is bringing us this live footage. Got a lot of surfers on the island who are anticipating a possible Eddie Aikau event uh, today. They ended up postponing it to hopefully another day uh, this season. And uh, we're looking at the forecast, so keep a uh, check out Surfline. And mm -hmm. uh, I know I have the premium membership where you can look forward into like two weeks in advance. It really is good, guys. If you don't have it and you're doing that 15 second before it goes to commercial, <laughs> come on. I did just that for run years. your credit card. I know I did too, but it's just like, oh. It was when my son was finally like, Dad, just, yeah. just get it uh, already. Yeah, stop, the, stop refreshing yeah, this yeah. thing. But you know, like I was telling you earlier, you know, I slide my finger 45 minutes through material. I'm like, whoa, there's too many aku birds out there. I'm gonna stay home. That is not the way. You just gotta go surf. You know what I mean? It lets you know exactly what's going on out there. But yeah, yeah this is really cool. This new series, 20 foot plus, along with heavy, heavy water surf, chronicling the world's best big wave surfers and the heaviest waves on earth. So you guys, glad that you're joining us because this isn't. The first these surf lines gonna go around the world with this group yeah jamie mitchell and zach porter and a huge list of guys like guys like ian walsh mccool rothman twiggy baker alex botello aaron gold albie lair emily erickson eli olson so many guys on this list will be talking about lucas chumbo chianka and um you know his, his uh towing buddy kai lenny amazing stuff we saw kyle lenny at the backdoor shootout a couple days ago oh yeah he could put you in a combination situation on his stand-up paddleboard if he wanted to i mean he served those big boards very well here we go so the wave three oh party wave oh there we go we had one of our magnitude girls i think all three of them maybe that was well, polly ralda That's another one of our surfers. That is Kaya Waldman kicking out on the inside. No, uh, Laura Enever is out there too from Australia. And, uh, I have Laura Enever. She's out there in yellow. So maybe they just meant her hair look yellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that would be confusing, but yeah. Now, now that I'm looking at the screen, I do see a lot of yellow, but more board than suit. So maybe that's what it is. We also have. Um, 
Siri Matterson out there in an orange board, black Patagonia suit. Katie Mai McConnell out there in the turquoise board, tie-dye arms, white helmet. I'll be looking for you, girl. Yeah, we, I mean, uh, was you reading those names, you mentioned Makul Kai Rothman. We saw him on a really good one earlier, not too long ago. Rode it all the way to shore and decided to call it a session. Best ride I've seen so far today. Yeah, there's been some amazing ones. Um, even before we got started, there was a couple guys that had some amazing rides earlier this morning. Here we go. Rider up. Is that guy with the yellow or green? What color is that? Hmm. Fluorescent, fluorescent, fluorescent something. yellow. Seen that rider catch quite a few waves today, actually. Which every time I see that color, I always think of Uncle Alan Wicklin. Ever since I was a little boy, he's had fluorescent yellow boards first. <laughs> oh, fluorescent, it was the color yeah, in the 80s. No, it was, it was. Yeah, I love the, the 80s, you know, yeah. so colorful and vibrant. I love the music. The Zinka, speaking the Zinka. of, I uh, remember. Um, I'd still wear Zinka today if I had a tube. Until, uh, we're talking about Marvelous Marvin Foster. Oh, so good. And uh, I remember he was part of that ad advertisement of, of the of Zinka and remember him going down him with Sony and Tahiti and him getting these barrels and you can see just the the war paint they would mm -hmm. call it yeah put the stripes I don't know if it really served much purpose on a dark Hawaiian but um, I know well you know what it would do it would give these guys tan lines you draw <laughs> a design on your face you know what I mean like the old um, surf coaches back then their eye they had sunglass burn right I mean, right it's funny days uh, you were talking about Ben Ipa earlier and how he coached. I don't think people realize how many people pro surfers he coached. he coached that just from uh, like the An Irons brothers, I believe, mm -hmm. when they were young, to so many. Sonny Garcia, yeah. um, Rob, Kalani Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I grew up in Hilo on the Big Island. I would fly out for, you know, surf contests when I was a kid and stuff. Um, I wasn't lucky enough to be coached by him, but I was kind of jealous. Yeah. You know, I see the the top guys would they would sit out on the jetty before they paddle out to their heated bowls in the s states or whatever, yeah. and getting the tips from. I'll try and like eavesdrop. I'm like, oh, right, what, right. what Uncle Ben telling yeah. them to do? I made friends with him on my own at bowls, and he just started doing that. And then at the U.S. Open with his son, them and Kalani Rob, he'd go, "Hui, come here." and give me 15 minutes of his time everywhere we'd go around the world. So I. Here we have the water patrol Mario. here. There's that sled we were talking about earlier. But one of my favorite boards back then, um, when I was in high school, was a, a Stinger. You know that. Yeah. And today, uh, my favorite board I'm riding right now is the um, the flat earth that basically is an okay. IPA from his son Aquila. From Firewire, yeah. But these uh, guys are Aquila killing Ipa it. Put the Stinger, but made yeah. it lower. It's like way down yeah. by the fins now. So that hard edge and. Nice. Love that board. I even I even rode it uh, at cloud break, like six foot cloud break on it. So you've been riding the flat Earth, Earth. yeah. That's a great Earth. board. And you know, him and Kelly got something new brewing with Firewire too. So exciting, exciting stuff. And it's cool because I mean, Akila and also his brother Duke are both keeping that tradition of. Have you seen Duke alive. Stingers? Yeah. Uh, and he had a collab with Mayhem. Those things look radical. Yeah. All dad stuff. I just love it. The two brothers keeping it alive. And my nephew, Kuio Young, who's been surfing a lot lately, has been riding those. That guy rips. Yeah. Yes, he does. He has uh, an amazing Aquila Ipa quiver. Some customs of his own as well. And, uh, you know, back in those days, um, in the you know, 70s and earlier, most of these surfers made their own boards. Like Ben mm -hmm. Ipa made his own board. Mark Richards made his own board. Jerry Lopez made their own board. All these guys would like mm -hmm. make their own boards. That's kind of a tradition of old times too. I mean, Duke Hanamoku uh, was known as like one of the best surfboard makers. That's because you would make your own board. And so, interesting. Uh, we've kind of gone away from that in many ways. Mm -hmm. for, no, we uh, have. So, but I don't know. Maybe something that put it on your bucket list for surfers to make your own board once and try and ride it because that's kind of what it used to be like. Yeah. You saying and you it tried easy. one? It isn't easy. No. You know, all the carpentry and everything I do, I, I just don't make my own boards or touch or, or even fix my own things. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm so bad. I just tape them, and then it just yeah. doesn't work. You do? You tape them? Well, you still get tape at home on your favorite board. Yeah. That's the thing. I will take it to, like, a, a specialist guy, like Dan's Franzman and Y. Lewis Sugar Mill. I just don't want to touch any of my Thunderbolts. I want him to fix it. Like, all these guys out there, their favorite guns, you want to get it fixed. Yeah. I just don't have patience, though. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the waves are good. Okay, I... You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I guess if you have enough boards in your quiver, you, oh, yeah, that you, you love, you know? Yeah. But you don't want to neglect your favorite one because oh, she's go. got a big slash. Got our oh, crew out here. Crew. Aloha. Aloha gang. Right. Oh, that is a legendary um, Beelman. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Senior. Yeah. Because yeah, the junior, Brent Beelman. Junior was in front of us um, at the Volcom house for the backdoor shootout. Yeah. yeah it's father and son, man. Right on. Killing it. And then we had um, Eric Eppel. He's uh, going to be out there. Man, that guy gets amazing cinematography. And uh, he's with us today. He's part of Salt and Air Studios. Thank you again to Mike Prickett, Ikaika, Kimura, David Bowen, Kevin Prickett, um, Rick, Pat, Josh, and Eric Eppel. Thank you guys so much. If you don't, if and you, Terrence, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Yeah, this crew at Salt and Air Studio. If you don't know Mike, Mike Prickett, um, I just today was able to hold in my own hands. Yes, me his, too. <laughs> yeah, he's an Academy Award. He's, he, he, he has won an Academy an, Award an right here in the booth. So really goes to show you who we're yeah, for, for we're working hundred, under here. The hundred foot wave on HBO, and he showed me the photos of himself in a tux and yep. on the red carpet and got up on TV and yeah. held it up. So and got me and Doctor Walker are touching this <laughs> thing like, no, this is real, David <laughs> Bowen. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And we both just touched it and then we touched hey, it you again. You almost broke it, huh? Uh, no, no, I never <laughs> broke them. You was the kind. <laughs> Oh, you definitely, okay, hey, no touch, the thing, no you guys, the Grammy thing, the, the, the award, it's real. You drop that, you break your toe, maybe your foot. Oh. The thing is heavy. That was neat, you know, just paying homage to some of our locals that this guy, Mike Prickett, has for so many years, all the famous surfers in Hawaii internationally, he has done cinematography video for some of the best edits and movies that you watch today. So... Yep, right. and we're here, Sultan Air Studios. What a beautiful crowd it is out there. It's like not beautiful elbow crowd, to elbow. Yeah. It's not like, you know, like what we've seen the other week. I'm sure some of those average Joes that came out and got in the way are also at home very sore. Hopefully you guys are logged in and watching. We're watching the Red Bull magnitude. We're watching some Wahines getting some waves underneath their belt for this uh, Red Bull Magnitude surf digital surf contest and we also are watching this amazing new series 20 foot plus brought to you by Surfline and Salt and Air Studios and the heavy water surf organization chronicling the world's best big wave surfers and the heaviest waves around earth so always stay tuned and join us because 20 foot plus telling stories of our community and uh, these people are fathers, mothers, professional tradesmen. You know, there's not a lot of money in big wave surfing. There's not a big tour, so they took it under their own hands and they're creating their own format. And they're actually just going around and you guys get to watch this live on Surfline. You get to watch them charge, Isaiah. So it's a super exciting program. There we go, here's a shot of our surfers out there in the lineup. Looks almost like 50-50, like gendered wise. I dig it. I dig it. Who's that guy out there in the yellow red rail board? That looks like a Chuck Andres board. Oh, Uncle Chuck. Shout Uncle out to Uncle Chuck. Chuck. Another big wave rider. Him. And he makes a lot of boards for for Waimea. He is. I seen him at the ceremony, and I, yeah, amazing boards. Um, Clark Abbey is another pioneer out there at Waimea Bay. He hypnotizes big waves with his green eyes. I like seeing, he's like a grump, man. Surf, 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 surf. Surf small waves, surf big waves. Surf's big Honolulu Harbor, no leash. Oh. You know, you know, the, you know the Speedo crew. These guys don't mess around. All right, well, 
we're gonna take a break and come back and more action here with Surfline 20 foot plus. Stay with us. So when you know you're being pushed really deep or when you are pushed deep, it's, it's just pressure, like a lot of pressure. Obviously your ears are probably cleared um hopefully you had time to clear them if not you probably broke in your drum but your ears will be clicking you know you'll decompress your ears like divers will diving you'll um, you'll feel the you'll feel your lungs get kind of like tight and and compressed so um you'll feel the tension on your leash you'll be at one end of the spectrum of your leash and your board will be at the other and that's about at least 12 15 feet of separation between your board when you got tension on your leash and and then it's also like, well, I'm down here for a while. It's about, once it gets to about 12, 15 seconds, it's, you're not coming up, then it's probably time to start going up or use your, your, the, your blow up vest to get, get, help you get up for the next wave because interval about 20 seconds, you got about 20 seconds before the next wave comes over you if you are in that long period interval as well. Welcome back, gang. It's Ezra Rodriguez and Isaiah Walker. We are not letting this day of big waves go. We are bringing it to you live on Surfline Salt and Air Studios. And thank you to 20 Foot Plus, the new series brought to you by Surfline and Heavy Water Surf, chronicling the world's best big wave surfers and the heaviest waves on earth. This is not a surf contest. This is just a play for play. We're just watching the Red Bull Magnitude girls practice out in the water and we're also watching just a bunch of free surfers and this new gang heavy water surf organization. Yeah, right. So, I mean, at a time when there's not a whole lot of big wave events, it's, a, it's mm -hmm. great that people like Jamie and his partner Zach are taking this initiative to bring those opportunities to other big wave surfers. Um, so, kind of cool to, to have a venue like this when I mean, what makes it even cooler, in my opinion, is that the Eddie was supposed to run today, the yep. event. So we're just kind of bringing you um, like a pre-show in some pre -show, way. Pre-show, yeah. To what's coming there. Here we go. Some action live here at Waimea Bay. Ooh, the guy just got grinded up behind him, Isaiah. Is that Mr. Joey Aloha there? It might have been. Yep, so Waimea Bay here on the North Shore of Oahu. Waimea in some ways sort of is right in the center of the North Shore. In, in many ways it divides, um, I'd say like the North Shore has sort of two kind of regions. Two in some sides ways. to yeah. it. No, that's funny that you mentioned it. And even the people yeah. choose to stay on, on mm -hmm. the west side of it and on the north side of it. Here's a replay. We'll see what happened on that one. Took the drop. Oh, and then just lost the, lost their knees out and just does look like brother Joey kicking out you know yeah. what I mean yeah so like yeah. you got like the Lonnie's the mm -hmm. Haliva the I don't know if I, I mean, know could you say that there's more people from town that surf that side because yes closer? but I I'll tell you what from knowing the side to the left side of Waimea if you're looking out of the ocean like the Chun's Reef all that side I know for years of people over there they've never come over to the other side of Waimea you know what I mean? Where it's more aggressive, more sponsored surfers. You know what I mean? You got Pipeline, Rocky Point. You know what I mean? You got to kind of know what you're doing when you paddle out to Rocky Point right. in certain places over there or you're not going to get a wave, you know? I got you. There's just two different sides. I love both sides, you know? But They're I know different kind of waves, yeah. too. Like, honestly, on the, the northern side of Waimea, a lot of, I mean, beach break-ish kind of like Eukai, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rockies, Pipeline, those are kind of like, they're so close to shore, it mm -hmm. had, it's it's different from Lonnie's. Here we go. There's a rider taking off. Oh, a nice water angle of this one. Yeah, that is a nice water angle. I That's wonder. Beelman or Larry Haynes or who's out there. Or on Eric the Apple from Salt and Air. I've seen him getting his equipment ready. It's no joke making ready to get into the thing and riding a feed like this. Beautiful ride to the inside. He's a part of that um, coincidence, the red jersey Quicksilver safety vest oh, yeah, today. Yeah. Um, there was a point this morning when we were watching the feed that I uh, texted Jeff and said, hey, are they all out there? And we're, no, that's just a coincidence. Yeah. 
So I thought that was pretty interesting. Everybody showed up in their big wave red today, right? Well, I mean, a lot of that movement um, to have those vests uh, was kind of the result of some some big wave surfers, you know, losing their lives to the surf, particularly mm -hmm. like Sion Malowski. Oh, um, Sion. So like, like Sion. After his passing, and I know that a lot of guys, especially like Shane Dorian, was involved with, and many others, with sort of development of this technology that can um, use these cartridges, these yep. seal cartridges, to pull the cord and to inflate. It's been a game changer. And it has it, been. It's good for you know saving lives and keeping people a little safer. And um, I remember the year Shane Dorian was explaining it, you know what I mean? Because it was really helping him. He was on the forefront, probably the biggest charger throughout those years. Oh, here we go. Ooh, nice drop, fading, staying with it. It's going to shoulder off for him. Now, that there is a difference from, oh, here we go, live action. Oh, oh! Our backsider on the fluorescent green board. Took the elevator. Ever down. since we started, that was his most inconsistent ride of the day. <laughs> We're saying, man, like the bottom will drop out underneath you here at the bay, and so that we just saw that and hit the eject button. Have to go feet first. You seen the young man last year, Jake Maki? Oh, Jake. This, oh man, did you see that one? I mean, he just jumped off a three-story building, pin dropped, came out the back. Good to see that guy making the charge. He surfs pipe, and he just loves what he does. He loves surfing big waves. Yeah, best thing about Jake, uh, he's one of my kind of, I don't know, Hanai nephews, I suppose. And I knew him when he was younger. I used to help coach the Kahuku surf team. Oh, good stuff. So he was on that. He was, and he was, you know, back when he was short before he hit that growth spurt. and. Mm -hmm. Tall and lanky, appreciate you know? about it. He's just a good kid. He you is. Know, like just real good kid. Shout out to his parents for raising him just right. Just being at the Volcom house with you last year, setting up for the backdoor shootout. The kid was out there in the dark, like one of the only ones yeah, on that helping. dark, brackish, ominous day. Oh, yeah. you no know, free all surfing, surfing yeah. and always helping. Yeah. You know, and then. Oh, look at this. He Something. was going through some boardless times because he breaks boards. Like Ooh, go, go, go. Beautiful Waimea takeoff. Nice. See if we can handle that rodeo. Three guys. Three to two. Three to two. Oh, wow. Now, there may there may be multiple boat guys on the same color board. Prone. Unless this guy is very active out there. This is a different guy on the fluorescent green. I, I've been noticing the other guy that we've been watching has a knock knee stance, more like. Oh, here we go. A Luke Egan stance. That's Joey Caddis there. When you live in those houses, those homes right there, and the, the surf is pumping, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. Thunder. And everything is salty. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's funny. People are always like, oh, I want to live on the ocean. Yeah. Bruh. I wonder if some, you know. Your house rusts in like. Yeah, I, was, I wonder no if time. some, like, you know, visitors that maybe own one of those houses complain about the salt. Like, people complain about the snow. Take it, take it, Ezra. <laughs> Oh, I love snow too. Drone footage of Waimea Valley. Uh, also, I mean, take the time if you're here uh, visiting, or even if you lived here and never had a chance to go back into Waimea Valley. It's beautiful. You've uh, done the quad ride behind there? I haven't done the quad rides, but uh, you know, I'll take my kids up to the waterfall, go Good swim stuff. in the falls, um, hiking. It's a very educational tour too. It's like a go through. How long um, to the waterfall? Like to long? walk? It's pretty. About, I mean, it's maybe forty minute walk one way. That's not too bad. Yeah, but it's like paved roads. So it's it's breezy, easy breezy. Easy, yeah, but it's beautiful. Botanical garden. They also have like places you can eat and stuff. But Waimea Valley, really cool. A lot of you know historic place. The it's the water here. Like this, um, you know, the 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 river is what makes the surf. In you know, the, it carves out the reef. Look at this. That's a I love that deep water. One footage Ooh. yeah look at Sheesh. that look at the guy deepest right here I thought he was safe, but no I nope. mean the thing just jacked he went right over the rib not knowing that the rib was behind him he should have 
and then this guy went to the prone. So I wanted to ask you and your sons, you guys ever surf the Waimea River wave? Have you guys ever partaken in your career and done it? Because the last one I seen. That was insane. That thing was double overhead was Jamie O'Brien's head. Like I was like, oh, that's a little bit bigger than it usually is, you know? Yeah, it's, that, it, I, I haven't done it before. Um, Me neither. You know, I don't want to get leptospirosis. Oh my gosh! No, I mean that that last day, there was so much water. It just seemed, you know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Oh, but as you can see, the warble. He wanted it, but then he kind of He said, "Nah," uh, right at the end. Might have been a she too. I don't know. Yeah. So Waimea Valley has this a uh, lot of water coming down, of course, mm -hmm. and then. Um, you know, the, at the end, the the river isn't always flowing. It's rarely open, in fact. And so it just yep. sort of builds and builds and builds. And then right when it's about to, you know, overflow, I mean, naturally it'll overflow and, and create one of those. But, you know, that that's usually when some of the boys get out there with the shovel mm -hmm. and make kind of s initiate the... Well, the boys the got smart. They make the other boys go out oh, there yeah, and dig yeah, yeah. until it's ready. No, and then, like, what? Okay, well, close, close. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Every person gets smarter in our industry. Yeah. Mm, let them dig. They want to play. Let them dig. Um, which John Clark, who's a uh, historian too, wrote some mm. books. Here we go over the f whoa, kind Ooh. Of eject there. Oh yeah, that's the one we saw earlier. It's a free Been ball. charging all morning. Hopefully that board didn't hit him. There's that one. Whoa! Look at that warble that hey. made things challenging. Ooh. He was on his way to some fun, though. So, uh, uh, according to John Clark, writes uh, he has a few books out on uh, on on surf and stuff and beaches and stuff. Um, but talks about how you know it was traditionally too, like in old times, there's record of of in old Hawaii of them riding river waves too. Hmm. So, oh, behind the cliffs. Nice shot of where you don't want to be. How's those um, few brave folks who go left out here at Waimea? I know Marvin Foster was one that would do that. Marvin Markeely, that Markeely. one winner, he was he's very successful and discussed how he watched that from Marvin at a young age. I think I saw Jake Mockey surfing some lefts last year, too. Pretty I wouldn't heavy. put it past him. <laughs> um, also remembering um i seen some things from the maui boys there was an also uh, a brazilian maui surfer that had just passed that would surf left at jaws too oh yeah um that was pretty amazing i got to watch some footage of that man a huge lefts i mean they were discussing of how he sat way inside and they would discuss that about marvin quiet on the inside of everybody nice. off to the left scary stuff there's a rider Her style looks similar to Paige Alms, but I don't know mm -hmm. if that's Paige, but Paige is incredible. I mean, especially at Jaws. I uh, think you're really close. Yeah, he, that's a light purple board, isn't it, there? But Paige is an incredible big wave surfer. That's either Paige or Kaya Waldman, maybe. I had the opportunity, actually went out um, to Huntington for this, actually for a surf line thing that uh, they invited me to come and speak and talk a little bit about surfing and history and Hawaii and so forth and we we're on a panel and Paige was on that panel and it was cool to you know get to know her a little better and just she's again an, another good human being but man she's I mean dominant at Jaws uh, okay. the last few years with when they had the uh, women out there in the lineup that uh, she made it look easy and so hopefully maybe that's Paige out there today, but if so, strong, good style. Yeah. Yeah. Aloha to her. Here we go. Somebody paddling for this one. That's the worst, right? When you paddle for the first wave of the set and you don't oh. get it. Every surfer knows that feeling, but that is the w yeah. But at Waimea, it's something that. Definitely scary. Luckily, there wasn't. 
I mean, and then you get mad at yourself, but then you're about to get the biggest horrendous lickings of your life, too. You know (laughs) what I mean? So you just got to, like, think positive, (laughs) turn around, breathe, calm your heart rate down. That's the hardest part of this big wave surfing is the heart rate. Here we go. Yeah. Nice style. Nice style. I believe this is a wahine. Yeah. And you know what? You ask all your big wave friends, like, what did you do on that, you know, white bottle? Well, I just went to a car. Just be quiet. (laughs) (laughs) I I went to a calm calm place. place. I said, I know you. You're not a calm guy. (laughs) Tell me you went to a calm place again. I know. Uh, But then, you know, like it's it's so easy. You know, you you just got to put your mind at ease and just relax. Okay. Yeah, I know. Tell that to my heart. That's pounding, pounding out of my How chest. am I supposed to tell it to stop doing that? Yeah. And then, you know, these guys are so good at what they do, you know. You know, an average human being would just take a huge breath hold and go down, and then you're just a flotation device underwater. There is a definitely trick to their trade and what they do, you know. A lot of stuff goes into it, techniques and whatnot. So, you know. Yeah. That's why it's hard in this uh, monkey see, monkey do kind of era nowadays. You know what I mean? Just because it looks easy doesn't mean that it is. And just because you can do a two-turn combo doesn't mean you should paddle right yeah. out to Waimea and sit next to these uh, wahines and men. Right. Because then, then you become a hazard to others, right? Like you're talking mm-hmm. about how your friend Chris Owens uh, got hit. And, and so that it's... You become a liability to other people, and that's just mm-hmm. not cool. Especially if you don't have that experience and you aren't aren't familiar, but you're just kind of like, oh yeah, I, I think I could do this. And he's historic out there. He puts so much time into it, so it's just like you know, like uh, nowadays, you know, when you're a diehard surfer and and you know, either you get paid for it or it's your whole lifestyle. When someone tells you, hey, sorry, man, <laughs> I mean, that's uh, okay. I'm out for two weeks. I can't go to work. Maybe months, but yeah, sorry, man. So, oh. awareness, awareness, and identify danger. Know where you are. Know who you're around, and know who you're surrounded by. Surf community is massive. It's internationally known. Brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I just thought so everybody was waving their hands really quick, but no. You're seeing things. Yeah. So beautiful day here in Waimea and uh, this is Surfline bringing it to you live on this big Wednesday and 20 foot plus great series here where here we are uh, Aloha. Aloha gang all right so Edward Rodriguez Isaiah Walker uh, we're here with Salt and Air Studio and Surfline giving you this live coverage of Waimea Bay on a 20 plus day so Awesome views here. We're looking at the lineup at Waimea. This is uh, current. This is live, and see, we have some beautiful weather. It's it's got a little. It, it's not very hot today, which is nice for us. Although Real people nice. on the U.S. on the continent are probably like, "What do you mean, 70 degrees? That's not cold." Well, the people standing on the side of the road, they're definitely sweating in all the action. <laughs> yeah. So we're looking toward the the point here at Waimea, and right there in the middle is the iconic. Uh, chapel there and uh, you can see the jet skis perfect circle on the inside waiting for the surfers to go right and you can look back into Waimea Valley beautiful valley that goes up there back Pupukea and continue on it goes actually kind of interesting right here is um, you know a lot of a lot of people know December 7th, 1941 was the day it lives in infamy, right? Uh, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But yeah. um, when those planes that came and bombed Pearl Harbor, they actually flew right over this, um, went to Pearl Harbor from this way, from the North Shore uh, along here, and then went straight over to Pearl Harbor that way. They split up in two, actually, and then the one group went along the east side over to the left of the screen um, and went to Kaneohe Bay where the, there was... Yeah. You know, Marine Corps mm-hmm. base there. That is there a bunker up there? There's at tons Pupica? of bunkers. There's at ton- Pupica, like during yeah. that time. There Not was. during that time. They, okay. they built it after. After, because there was no gun turret on the North Shore. You know how they. Yeah, so yeah. after Pearl Harbor was bombed, then it was like, oh, we need to, you know, build this up in better case. in the yeah. future. 
that's history I mean, there were, to th me. Yeah. There were some things, you know, that some, um, you know, bunkers that were there, but it was really mostly after that they started to mm -hmm. beef it up even more. To those were the after bunkers after yeah. Pearl Harbor. Gotcha. So I know a lot of a lot of folks will go hiking uh, up in these mountains here and to these bunkers. So there's a bunker in Aukai behind mm -hmm. the elementary school. There's a bunker here at Pupukea right above there behind the church there. Here we have the highway, Kamehameha Highway. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks spectating, watching the big waves, checking it out. As you can see, the water was coming up about an hour ago. Yeah, another interesting like thing about the beach here at Waimea, when all this energy of these massive walls of, of water breaking in here in Waimea in the bay, when they come up to shore, they have a lot of momentum to oh, them. Oh, I've seen those videos. And so, like, the lifeguards, the number one thing I think they they warn people is, hey, back up from the shoreline. And it's not that you could not even be touching the water and be standing there on the sand, and one of those waves will come and basically karate chop your legs and sweep mm -hmm. you. And uh, and then the scary part is it pulls you out. Pulls right? you back. It knocks yeah. you off your feet, and then it pulls you out. And so it's better to be preventative with the, the lifeguards. We usually tell people before it happens, kind of predict, like, oh, no, yeah. no, don't stand there. Back up a little. And once it gets you to that part of the shoreline, it dives you down into the deep, deep. where it just keeps churning, and they'll throw you back on the beach if you're lucky. But And that white man shore break is powerful oh man even when it's not even this big that thing can be have its moments and it's fun like you'll see some people try and uh try and tangle with the shore break see some videos jamie o'brien and his friends trying to get barreled on the shore break is pretty hefty here speaking of hefty look at this set oh, oh. nobody That was a steep one. Good choice. I mean, it's, it, it's a hard one to make. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd be struggling right now if you didn't make it. <laughs> Here we go. You'd get this one on the head, actually. Beautiful takeoff by this goofy foot surfer. A lot of foam to play with as he got to engage his fins and get up and out. Nice pocket ride for black. So another mo'olelo I guess I can share during mm -hmm. uh, the downtime here is there's a surfer named Kahiki Lani. Kahiki Lani was from Kauai, lived across the channel here. Uh, when I say channel, I mean in between the islands we have these, these channels, we, um, open ocean of course. And Kahiki Lani lived on Kauai and he would sail, uh, travel by double hull canoe to, to Oahu to surf the North Shore. This was in times of old. Here we go. Three riders up. Party wave. All three of them survived that one. And right out to as far as the wave can take you. So he, uh, in this legend of this Kauai surfer who comes to the North Shore, surfed a lot. Eventually there was this woman who lived up in the hills over here behind mm -hmm. Palmalu and Sunset Beach and he caught her eye just she was interested in him and she was like a mountain girl so she was known as this bird maiden she had these birds that sort of lived with her and were her friends and stuff maybe sort of like was it uh, Sleeping Beauty <laughs> or Snow White one of the characters that the, the birds that hang out with her and she talks to them and stuff Anyway, so she sends the birds down to the ocean to, to entice him to come up to her mountain realm. Mm -hmm. And he does. He comes up. Here's a replay. Let's see what happened there on that set. Oh. Oh. That is heavy. Oh, Good job, salt and air. That was like, oof. That is uh, somewhere you don't want to be. Is this one taking a real foamy one? And our Wahine surf with the blue helmet had yes. this bail on that one. That was. Hopefully she made it through the back of that because that was. That's Polly Ralda. That was heavy. Currently living on the North Shore. I always see her and uh, my photographer friend Kohil photos. 
always uh, takes photographs of her too when she's surfing Waimea and some other surfing shots so that's got to be her man I see her helmet though she's okay here we go here's she's another wave back fading beautiful fade to bottom turn nice style ready to rip I almost want to say and just put that out there that looks like Jack Ho Okay. Kiyahi Tucker, son. Oh, really? I just, you know, right. surfed with him a ton. I'm not too sure. I'll ask him later if he was wearing a red jersey. I just know that he has a darker color board, too. Oh, look at this one. Nice drop. Beautiful drop. Is that our Joey? No. Oh, this is um, who you were saying earlier. Maybe Paige Elms Maybe. in the black wetsuit. Sorry, gang, we're playing the guessing game, but this is a free surf, so a lot of different un unidentified surfers out there. Yeah, the action's picking up now. Yes, it is. They've been waiting for a long time in there. And you know, like some surfers out the back guarantee are freezing cold in their <laughs> wetsuit purple lip but you know when you're a surfer you're gonna like get out put in your time when we in hawaii say stuff like that must just frustrate the everyone oh, else of the world you're all like, my friends what you up mean, in freezing? santa cruz what you talking about why are you wearing a two mil front zip well makaha was cold the other day like just give me <laughs> no, no it wasn't no i to I them know, no I know, but I i'm freezing yeah yeah like oh there's a little wind chill on this they're like, give me us a break. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's really bad to say, too, because there's been so much bad weather in the mainland, too. Oh, I yeah. mean, they're freezing yeah. right now. Getting hit. Well, so anyway, back to our story of Kahiki Lani. Mm -hmm. So he's, this, uh, he's, he goes up and falls in love with this woman mm -hmm. who was in the, you know, the bird maiden up there and ends up living with her up in the mountain realm. And then, you know, the, the surf gets good again, right? And he's like, oh, babes, uh, I, I, gon, I gon surf. I'll see you later. So she's like, okay, just um, don't forget me and don't don't try to share any any waves with any other f of the wahines out there. And right. Uh, so he's like, yeah, no worries. Uh, and so he goes and surfs, and you know, as time goes on, there's a there's a female surfer in the water, and she comes Ooh. up to him and gives him uh, a lei, so um, a flower adornment. But it was also perhaps, you know, uh, the kauna may have been something else you know right so, right in other words maybe the you know they had done more than just that but uh, right the the birds who were flying around had witnessed the the act and so they flew back up to the mountains and communicated to the one they chirped to, to the her. girlfriend they yeah. chirped to her oh bro. and then she was pretty upset and apparently she also like uh kaili we talked about earlier this woman of the mountains had some supernatural powers too mm -hmm. so she uh she turned him to stone uh but so there's a there's a rock cropping behind palmalu yeah. that that is, is supposed to represent him, him as being frozen in time because of his unfaithfulness interesting how these we stories have about a few stone things around our islands that tie into these stories though. yeah so that's what you know our, all our, our histories are embedded within the landscape so a lot of stories in the landscape of, of of giant like a lot of like anthropomorphic gods meaning like like the power what is it morphing mm -hmm. power rangers or the the the, the, right. the teenage but mutant ninja turtles or things are like half human yeah. half but some other creature and there so was situation slight drama back then you know oh yeah, yeah. So, like, Kamapua is real famous, too, in oh, our mountain. Oh, I know him, yeah. Where he's half man, stories. half pig. So this mm -hmm. pig man that that um, kind of ruled the mountains. And he get really angry at times because he has shown us, you know. Right. And so lots and lots of stories in, in our mo'olo and our, in our histories. But surfing is just integrated into so many of these stories. stories. And it just showed how integral a part uh, that surfing was in in ancient Hawaiian society and the beauty of it is you know still today here we yeah. are in Hawaii everybody from around the world watching tuned in the surf line checking out this 20 foot plus special here we're giving you live footage of Waimea Bay 
and new uh, big wave surfing experience right? is yeah, exciting. And thank you to Future Fins and Sea Dew Jet Skis for uh, getting us going, and especially to Mike Prickett and his crew at Salt and Air Studios. Mahalo, mahalo. A uh, beautiful drone shot here of the Aina. So Aina is a Hawaiian word for land, but it also includes the sea. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, there where we were a few days ago. Down at Pipes, probably all third reef wash throughs right now. I think one of the Florence brothers are playing out there. You never know, those guys, when it tames down, it's yeah. just, you know, there's just certain guys when someone's not out, you know, those guys just pop out there. Yeah, so when the, if, if you're not aware, when the North Shore is this size, Waimea Bay is one of the only spots that is rideable. Here's a replay Beautiful here. Beautiful water shot from Mr. Eppel. Is that Keala, Kenley? Maybe That's not. That's a good analogy, though, from that know. first bend, and he's slowing it down. That's nice slow-mo. Oh, beautiful, getting low down his deck. Size of that white water behind him. Laid off his fins as he hit the foam track. Yeah, good footage. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of big wave riders, they work really hard to live their lifestyle. Yeah? Yeah. Got to do a bunch of stuff. You don't get paid when you leave your job. So, you know, it's a different kind of lifestyle to ride mountains. Get, yeah. yeah, we talk about Kahikilani, but there's also, I mean, more modern day um, pioneers of surfing. Uh, and I want to, I mean, one of the reasons why I talk about Kahikilani is I, one thing as a historian and in the book, I kind of articulate this is um, there, we have to remember that surfing is not just a modern thing in Hawaii. So, so sometimes we'll, we'll talk about how the North Shore was kind of discovered in the 1950s or whatever. Um, but Hawaiians have been surfing in Hawaii for mm -hmm. generations, for centuries, in fact. So, um, but we do have stories of like modern times when people have been surfing the bay more recently. Um, stories of Greg Knoll and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so we're you know we're still celebrating something that took place a long time ago, but celebrating today. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. We'll share with you more of these live action surf lines, twenty foot plus. See you in a moment. Stay tuned, gang. wipeout or I'm under for a long time I kind of just literally just go to this blank state you know I almost try to enjoy it in a way you know and a weird that sounds super weird but like you just <laughs> I feel like if you freak out it's gonna make you drown so if you kind of enjoy it and just know that it's gonna be okay and you know I pray a lot too underwater and say when I see a, a big wave coming it's just like all right well we just got to get through this so just relax like you freaking out it's gonna only make it worse and so we just kind of kind of go into a, almost like a zen kind of mode you know you can't freak out that's the biggest thing it's no matter what you do you gotta find a way to uh, stay stay calm and find a peace with it Welcome back to Surfline Live, 20 foot plus. We're here on the North Shore of Oahu at Waimea Bay. And we are making the most of this swell. So this was the almost eddy swell. And yep. fortunately, uh, Surfline teamed up with Heavy Water Surf Organization to make the most of this swell. Even though the eddy event didn't run today, we're still having this sort of expression session there's opportunities here for uh, this group of big wave surfers to um, that we're able to spotlight some of them today at the bay and we're also you know celebrating some of our wahine chargers some of the women out there in the lineup we're part of the red bull magnitude, magnitude and uh, they're, they're, they're trying to gather some clips together to participate in this uh, competition where at the end of the season the, the best clips will be uh, rated for the 
big wave prowess of, of our of our female surfers. So in our lineup today here, uh, we have a mix of these surfers and we've seen a lot of good rides. Today we have um, some 20 footers coming in and the, the winds are, are from the east northeast and Surfline called it and we're we're seeing the um, forecast spot on where uh, we've seen a lot of great waves and some cleaner winds as the day progresses. So um, I'm Isaiah Walker. Joining me here in the booth is Ezra Rodriguez and Hola. just really celebrating this big wave swell and trying to bring it to you here at Surfline. Yeah, stoked to be here today bringing you guys the live action. We've got to really thank Salt and Air Studios for bringing it to you along with Surfline. And thanks to Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter for organizing a group of heavy water surf. And, you know, it's not going to be the first time we're going to be going around the world giving you these live sessions, you know. These guys are all tradesmen, fathers, mothers. They got children and they ride big waves. They ride, ride mountains. So, you know, it's a great platform for these guys and very exciting as, um, you know, Surfline, our official forecast sponsor, they will identify and chart the biggest storms of the year and advise heavy water surf pending on the XL swells. So you're going to be seeing more of us and more of this amazing expression session done up by Surfline. So yeah, I like that. It's a unique format, you know, yeah. like it's kind of virtual. You can be anywhere and and to be able to have the surfers to chase these different things. And I also like mm -hmm. the element that uh, heavy water with, you know, JV Mitchell and Zach Porter trying to empower the the athletes themselves to have a little bit more autonomy to to, mm -hmm. to make decisions um, and to have that flexibility of of being able to you know, express themselves on big waves and great that they're teaming up with Surfline to bring you these kind of live, live coverage. So, mm -hmm. all right, we got some water shots of our folks out there on the skis. Beelman, legend. Is that them? Yeah. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Uh, the Shaka sign. You know about the background of the Shaka sign? I've heard There's three various, different, but There's yeah, different. yeah. I'd love to hear yours. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, there's varying stories as to the origin of the shaka. And the shaka, if you're not aware, is, um, you know, you've got the thumb and the pinky finger up and the three middle fingers down. And it's a famous wave that have been sort of, you know, associated with surfers, mm -hmm. you know. And hang loose, bro. Hang loose. But it's definitely, you know, has its origins in Hawaii. And so the version that I'm most familiar with is there was a, uh, a waterman from Hawaii around the corner of the North Shore here and from Laie. His name was Hamana Kalili, and uh, he was a famous fisherman and a waterman and a surfer. Mm -hmm. But somehow he lost his three middle fingers, whether the, the legend is it was either a work accident where he was on the sugarcane plantation. Did he work at the sugarcane plantation. Right. Okay. O or, you know, I've heard stories that maybe a shark bit them off, or okay. we don't know exactly how the three fingers were dislodged from his hand, but um, but so when he'd wave to people, he, it looked like a shaka because yep. he had no other alternative, mm -hmm. right? There's some waves. So uh, in Laie, today there's the Polynesian Cultural Center is there in Laie. Look at this wave. Here we go. Here we go. Deep drop. Make it. Deep lay. Yes, uh, engaged on his backside rail. Really good. He's going to get past that kerfluffle, but he gets, gets eaten up by it. Jet ski is awesome. going to check on him. Thank nice you to Sidu. Sidu also, um, you know, by outfitting Curtis Chong Ki, a new Sidu. Mahalo, mahalo to you, gang. And thanks for tuning in, Sidu Jet Skis. So in Laie, currently, there's what's called the Polynesian Cultural Center, with a predecessor to that before the Polynesian Cultural Center was called the Hukila. Okay. There's another wave rider. And Hukilau was basically on the beach at Hukilau Beach where they would have these shows. There would be a luau show, and they would... Uh, Hukilau is actually a fishing um, technique where you grab uh, a net and you, you pull the net. That's what the huki means. Mm -hmm. And lau is referencing the leaves. So you put all these leaves on the on the, on the the net, this big, large net, and you, okay. you scare the fish into the net, and it'd be a community thing. We all come out. And anyway, so 
that event was like a, a fishing show slash a, a luau show and it became very popular and like yeah here we go here's a, that drop my goodness that well, was kind of side flipping yeah free fall that was well done it's a tall guy too how you know it looked like it was in a big <laughs> wave oh, oh, tall, wave. <laughs> tall and lanky but he made it down I'm just trying to recognize all these guys that as well. Was, that was one of the better drops we've seen today. It was. I mean, it was really easy for him to fall, and he didn't right there. He, he made it through, rode the wave out, super stoked. So yeah, when did sick. the whole Shaka thing okay. just go yeah, so like... He, he worked at yeah. the Hukilau show is what I'm saying. Okay. So there were a lot of visitors that came to the show, and, and the event Tourism, would have yeah. like these performances too. They would dance hula and have like a like a court you know like mayday in hawaii where mm -hmm. they have like the chief and the you know the court that comes out in their colors and so um he was in that he was like kind of like the head chief of that that show that luau show and so hamana kalili would you know would see a lot of guests and would wave at them and with mm -hmm. the shaka and so it became very very popular as part of this show they say also like a lot of the people started to do it just because he was doing it and then of course there's others like comedians a guy named lipia spinda um, here's a rider here. Nice. Staying low, knowing what's coming for him. It's yeah, but was he like a really nice aloha kind of guy? He was a guy? big dude. Oh, here we go. Okay. Is he gonna get barreled? Trying to. Ooh, nice, fading back into the powerful white water. Looks like maybe that last ride, he was trying to make it all the way in. Yeah, so eventually, um, the, you know, the, the shaka sign becomes popular through mm -hmm. some comedians in Hawaii as they started to f throw the shaka. And some of these comedians would kind of do variations, you know, you see some colorful variations where you got like, you know, the the shaky shaka. But it's almost like mocking him, yeah, without yeah. not having his three fingers. Right. It, give or take, it's good and a little bit tease, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Too. And then I think what really made it more popular was um, Mayor Frank Fossey used it as like his slogan, his That logo was, that's right. For when he was Island running was for so different. mayor. I, you just took me back to a time. <laughs> the Fossey time. Yeah. yeah. Frank Fossey was the mayor of Honolulu, and um, he got they, us the he bus. That. Yeah, the, yeah, and the Shaka sign would, is still on the bus to show the Shaka when you, in that graphic, if the bus passes you, the Shaka. Anyway. Thank goodness he got us the bus because right. we would be waiting for the rail <laughs> for eternity. Okay, so thank you, Frank oh, Fossey. Okay. It's a wave. Somebody gonna go for this? No, but that would not be good if that wave caught him right there and threw him oh, over. No, I've seen sideways. it happen, man. Sideways. You want to go over sideways. That's a girthy whitewater, even though it was a medium wave. I'm noticing from many of our surfers today, and it's maybe it's just the nature of Waimea, the wave. Most people are making the drops, pretty hairy drops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. And then, like, it's after, it's like 10 seconds later that there's like a second, like, wave of of energy that like blasts you yeah but they they haven't been making mistakes getting all yard sailed in that they've been people have been playing a okay consistent game out there from the carnage i seen a couple weeks ago and you know a lot of people have oh, been here we go the slow-mo put on blast about what happened a couple weeks ago and check i feel this out let's see this slow-mo it's beautiful water shot here wow is that oh, that looks like kiala doesn't it yeah. To me, yeah, it's because she it wears the leash her. on the back. That's got to be Kiala. There's Kiala Kenley, hard charger. Oh, look at that. Sweet. Is that Derek Doner driving the ski? It does look like him. Another legendary guy. Him, He was partnered with Laird when they were doing those toe-ins at, at yeah. Piahi. Derek Doner, full on, North Shore, OG. From the day, he's seen so much change on these shores. Yeah, uh, I feel some of that. I mood. can't remember what I was talking about. Oh, the shaka. Yep, the shaka. And we started because Derek Dorner flipped yep. us a bunch of shaka, mm -hmm. the shaky shaka. Kind of cool that like everybody has their own. I, I was, I actually was uh, 
a judge once for a shaka competition. Oh, um. <laughs> at the Polynesian Cultural Center. Oh, gotcha. And they did this thing where you're like, who had the coolest shaka? And the girl who won made a shaka with her toes. Oh, no Our way. Feet. That sounds hard. I, already got hard. A I just got a toe cramp thinking about <laughs> it. But, you know, they it used was to clean, be though. It was clean. Hang loose from Brazil. I think they oh, had a yeah, clothing yeah. company on right. the nose, Flavio Paterats, and those guys came over. I was like, hey, what is that? Oh, we got some guys on the beach. Who's this? Well, he and I, after an awesome session, it looks like a few people are coming in for lunch now. Uh, and yeah, what a killer slow mo by Eric Eppel on that last one. And we noticed that was Kiala Kenley. So she wears a body leash, huh? Yeah. Okay. And I, that I is never, attached into her vest or I, it actually I straps so. around her, your waist? I, she's the only person I've seen with that, but like she was wearing, she was using that last year at the backdoor shootout. Yeah. And I haven't it seen it up close. I'm going to have to t check it out. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not sure of the science behind it or how it the engineering of it but it's a pretty it's cool I mean, seeing those new helmets they're soft i remember you were talking about oh yeah. helmets and stuff now there's that soft padding one it's like fabric but it also takes a huge impact that's pretty neat too accessories are key in big wave surfing let me tell you you know the the kind pin release uh, leash that's a thing of from years ago so i'm oh. sure they modified that you know leashes have just gotten better have you ever been stuck on the bottom from the leash yeah that's when you got to throw that leash pull. away yeah, yeah but you got to also pull the thing too but leashes that sink aren't the smartest thing because they're more dense you know what i mean they'll find a contour and lock you into it but when you're down in the bottom and you got to do a pin release you know you're playing with some big waves that's for sure i saw one of my friends he he almost, I don't want to say almost drowned, but he was smart enough to get out of it. But we were surfing as kids. Maybe he's watching now. My friend Ben Hakias, the Hakias family, Kaipo Hakeas. and Richard and many others. But my friend Ben, we were surfing this pretty reefy spot. And, um, you know, he pulled in the barrel, didn't come out, went underwater. But as he was coming up, like his leash got stuck on the reef. Whoa. And so he couldn't come up for, you That's know, air. That's scary. Oh, look at this. Three guys. Oh. One is down, two still going. Let's see if that Three secondary guys. white. Oh, he made that. That was the one that most people have been getting bucked yep, off this of. This one's Let's fading see. into uh, inside bowl. See what he comes the back up with. One. Outside, two riders. Oh. Two riders. Nice one from deep as he's going to make this bottom turn around the section. The one thing I will say, too, when you're watching from the safety of your home or your desk or from mm -hmm. your phone or where you're, where you're watching it, may feel it's a lot it feels a lot safer or more tame than it is in real life mm -hmm. it's like when you're here at the beach and you experience it there's something more i mean you you feel the the mm -hmm. honestly, the wind or the, the the sound or all of it but that there's just so much more to it yeah. than i feel like the tv screen just doesn't quite well, you get Give that it broken white water, right? And even if you're not a surfer, all those ions in the air make people in a real good mood. <laughs> Turn the grumpiest of grumps. Someone's smiling on the, you know what I mean? There you go. Some grump is watching Waimea just in a good mood today because right. of all those Pacific Ocean salt water breakups. Puts everybody in a good mood, not even a surfer. But, yeah, you can really feel it. So there was a lot of energy leading up to this swell. Here's the replay here of that last one. Three riders, the one who was deep ended up getting blasted. I believe there's one more after this one, but oh, yeah, yeah, this one, look, look, look how vertical this takeoff is. That's a big wave. Oh, oh belly flop, I didn't notice chop. that. Chop, that's Thank a you, big Salt wave. Nair. Surf oh, line for the, oh, oh. He didn't even wind down the windows, his window was stuck. <laughs> was stuck. Oh, man, I hope he took a breath. It's like when you're walking to the bathroom yeah. at night and you trip on the edge of the yeah. bed, the, the oh. leg of the bed. No, but that I won't walk two days later after that. <laughs> you mean, know, little, little, little nicks on my ankle and stuff like oh, that. Oh, that just means we're getting old. Oh, but, yeah, big time. But the, you saw that happen. Like, he was trying to turn, and the yeah. board was like, uh-uh. 
Yeah. And you can see because there's a, like a rib, like a little chop that oh was my preventing gosh. him from moving. But you know, in big wave riding too, this isn't a contest, but there is hierarchy out there and there is a amount of people that want respect can you imagine someone is in oh, front of this, you look at this another late drop you get frustrated oh. and fall off because you're angry that's not a good ooh, ooh. Survive. that's the section oh, oh and he came out beautiful explosion to ride out he's not going to get the short break bonus bull but he's got to be stoked on that ride right there oh Good Love ride. All, notice all these angles we're getting. This is cool. So right now this is probably up way over by the rock that you jump off of. Mm -hmm. Maybe even up on the cliff. Or maybe, yeah, but, up uh, on the cliff. It, it's got more of an angle to it, right? And then um, some of the replays we were watching from the water and then from the drone. So Salt and Air Studio giving us all the different angles yeah, here. You never know. Watch this guy pull back and be all the way by the road. <laughs> <laughs> He's up on a windmill. Hey, but that one water shot angle, that was spooky of the guy belly flopping. Oh. That's just like you see the girt, the size of wave from the water angle. Ooh. But you know, when you're surfing, like you can see these guys, certain people getting worked up. Like you don't want to get too worked up when you're sitting oh. too deep changes your breathing and everything and then you get shoulder hopped i was wondering if that's what that guy was going for oh you draw off oh, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> not fun skipping underwater oh, here we go no Ooh. beautiful roller that boil went into a fat face out in the channel Well, if you're just joining us, Surfline Live, uh, 20 foot plus, we're bringing to you live surfing for big wave action. We've got a variety of surfers out there who are vying to get some recognition here, especially for our female surfers who are part of this big Red Bull magnitude competition. Here's a replay, there's a nice drop. This one bottom turning makes it out of that look at this that's a nice that is a wave. nice one beautiful touching the touching the face of the wave on his drop down behind it here we go knife it goes up into the mid face and that was the section i was talking about earlier that a lot of our surfers have sort of have struggled to make it's, it's the second part of the section mm -hmm. that they've been struggling to make it through that explosion but that surfer was able to do it. Yeah, he went right over that bump and proceeded mid-face. So, yeah, you got these girls, not just in the Red Bull magnitude, they're part of the heavy water surf founding members as well. So really good to see these girls out there. They're part of what um, Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter have created, you know? Mm. They're putting their careers in their own hands, creating their own big wave format, and they're basically just traveling the world, chasing swells, surf lines helping them with the forecast. So they're going to be at every spot. And, you know, they don't get much downtime, these big wave surfers. You know what I mean? Once they finish something like this, then there's another swell on the way. So they're going to be just keep moving throughout the year. And, you know, there's not a lot of funding for these guys, and they're going to just do it. Uh, yeah, if any of you guys out there watching, you guys want to help these guys, there's also a GoFundMe for these big wave oh, really? riders as well. Yeah, talking to um, Jeff from Surfline, amazing brother. Uh, nice to meet you today. And uh, yeah, this is going to be an amazing series following all these athletes around the world. And today we're here at Waimea Bay. So viewers. We're inviting you, celebrating big waves, so stay tuned. Make sure you guys get your alerts on Surfline about the 20 plus series, because um, this isn't the first one. And uh, thank you to Mike Prickett and everybody joining in on this. Big things, big waves, they have big characters. Beautiful shot from the drone looking north here to the northern part of the island. The North Shore is technically like the Northwest Shore. Like if you look at the, the, the Northwest swells are the ones that come straight into the North Shore 
Um, the northern, most northerly point would be Kahuku Point. If we're looking right there. That's Keiki, um, Sharks Cove in the background, where normally it'd be, if there weren't any waves, it'd be a snorkeling area, but today, no snorkeling. Oh, no. You got some Keiki Beach Chargers also in this roster. I seen the Tahitian Drole. Oh, Matahi. Oh, bro, that is like a, a big show he puts on at Keiki Beach with Jamie O'Brien and those guys. And those guys are Red Bull athletes. J-O-B also got his own team this year, Pipe Hammers, coming out in the backdoor shootout. Oh, yeah. That's an exciting new team along with New Earth Project. Right, yeah, Kelly's going to be in that team. And Carissa. Man, I, I was looking at the Surfline forecast this mm -hmm. morning, and it's just all yellow and gold bars for, like, pipeline. No, I know, and it's uh, that's it's a tough like decision as for as the, the contest see, directors, you know? yeah. And it's interesting, though, it's relative, and I think Surfline yeah. knows this, where they mm -hmm. tailor it to the surfer, because just because something is gold mm -hmm. level doesn't mean doesn't it's mean it's for you yeah right. no no it doesn't mean it's yeah exactly like, but doesn't mean it's gonna be super cool i feel that i don't know i think it's gonna be amazing it because the waves are big and as they taper off you know pipeline's gonna be pumping i'm excited for the wrap i just love waves everywhere because it just spreads out the thickness of crowds you know it's gonna be exciting and i think pipe is just you know gonna be amazing there's gonna be a day where that's going to be the day in this week. I, yeah, I mean, I was saying, I was looking at my Surfline forecast, and there are, like, several of those. Um, oh, history is going days. down. So, yeah, the North Shore, a lot of energy. See that beautiful shot of, of Waimea Bay? And, um, you know, we're talking about surfing here from ancient times. Um, even in through the 1950s and 60s, you know, legendary. Hear, hear the stories of Greg mm -hmm. Knoll, that, that film Riding Giants, older movie now, but um, do you, you know, know Sam George made that film? I think yeah. Riding Giants, and yeah. and so it kind of chronicled the some of those pioneers in the 50s and 60s who came to surf the North Shore. Who was the first? <laughs> like, what? Do you have any? old Hawaiian stories where someone went out there. Yeah, so that's the thing. That's, that's kind of my point is that people in Hawaii have been surfing for for mm -hmm. centuries. And so it's not, I mean, that's one of my critiques of that narrative of of that generation of, I mean, no disrespect to Greg Noll at all. He's a cool guy and he's awesome. And he, Super he was awesome, but a, there was a, somebody a out there before Right, him. it's kind of okay. like saying Christopher Columbus mm -hmm. discovered America when in right. reality the people were there. So. So people had been surfing the North Shore for long before. However, I think during that time, 1950s and 60s, there weren't many, you know, because at that point, um, Hawaii's population and its and its you know economics and stuff had changed so much mm -hmm. where you didn't have as many uh, people surfing. Uh, but there were people on the North Shore who lived over here that surfed over here. One of them was mm -hmm. um, a guy named Kealoha Kaio. Uh, yep. K boy Kelo Kaio uh, Senior is um, was really good friends with Greg Knoll. In fact, I had a really cool experience where um, Keloha's son, whose name is K boy, he's also Keloha, but he he's a friend of mine, and he invited me to go to this dinner um, with Greg Knoll and this whole crew of big wave surfers. To pause my story here, as somebody's taking off, catching this one. If both riders can make it, beautiful. Might be two wahines actually. If you just look, what's happening right now? They're just getting flogged underwater. Oh, there's a head popped up. There it is. There it is. Oh, two riders here. It's kind of a quick up and out for these two. That might have been Irie Fritz with the orange and yellow rails, with the blue suit. So at this dinner, and it was at, at Duke's in Waikiki, and they were celebrating, you know, that generation of old timers are surfing mm -hmm. the North Shore. And I went uh, as a plus one with my friend K Boy in honor of his dad. His dad had passed already at that point, and sat at the table. And the whole time, Greg Knoll was just 
He was a little inebriated, but he was hold, he was holding <laughs> K-Boy Jr. just saying, just crying the whole time, like, I, you're, I miss your dad, and um, we, you know, we surfed those waves together, and he was amazing, and apparently he says that he was one of the first guys back then, Kealoha would take off behind the boil and bottom turn around it, like we're seeing some of our surfers today, you know, yep. taking off behind it mm -hmm. and bottom turning through that section, but he was known for that. Um, so there, were, you know, there were a lot of He's paying homage to him. It was right. good to hear that from him. From like, him. you know what? But like yeah. nobody else would document that, but to hear it from the surfers that right. came, that's neat. So, but it was a smaller crew. I mean, that, you know, of surfers that were surfing the North Shore back then, but there were a lot of, you know, humble underground Hawaiian surfers that were yeah. out here. Yep. And so. And they'll never say that they were the first one out. They're just, just whatever. That, right, right. Yeah. They hold a lot in their heart, like Mr. Duke Kahanamoku. Uh, Kimo Hollinger is another local Hawaii, Hawaiian surfer that was surfing the bay back in those days. I had a board from him. Really? That Ikaika Kalama left at my house. It was a cool looking fish, quad, but it's an older board. But when you feel it to this day, it's like, whoa, this thing's really fundamental right now, too. I mean, right. the thing's ready to ride. Kimo Hollinger. Right. Awesome. And then, you know, a little, little later into the 60s, the mid-60s, uh, you get, of course, Eddie Aikau, and yeah. his brother Clyde Aikau, and Ben Aipa, and Barry Kanaiopuni, and many, many others that were, um, you know, just really active in, on the mm -hmm. North Shore and the surf. And, Kanai of course, Puni. you know, on the west side, of course, where, you're, where you've spent most of your time surfing with the Keolanos. Look at this one. Backdooring wow. this one. Backdooring, super deep. Hold on. Yes. Uh. Beautiful low stance, and he gets imploded right there. You know, I really love that old film. Greg Knoll and his crew, they go out there. They go out, surf a few big days at Makaha, leave their three-stringer, huge single-fin boards on the wall right there where we sit at Makaha, come to town, Connie Kapila, pillage town a little bit, head back out to Makaha for the big waves. Their boards are right there. What a time. Uh, look at Nobody this one. touched them. Nice drop. Eddie never shaped his first his his own boards, yeah. When he was no, out. no. There's a story of how he. Um, I guess there was this red board that he saw in the window of this surf shop. It was like I think it was a Hobie. I can't remember exactly. I like. But I think it was. Yeah. And then he worked in a cannery, like a the pineapple cannery. It's saved up. To saved up money. But I guess apparently he worked at night and the pineapple cannery and then surf all day you know the price of this board kind of roughly i don't then? know those are neat times yeah. though i wonder how much he spent on his first surfboard and yeah he's kind of known and his shorts too it seemed like back then they had their signature like we, we were talking about here's a replay of this nice drop by two surfers well each opting to have their own line Beautiful. The deep guy looked like he was going left a little bit right. while he was in the white water. Here we go. This is a different wave. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is a medium insider. Medium. Oh, look at that one from way deep. This is another angle of that guy, huh? Yeah. Through nice deep rides blade, I through. And it's so oh, cool to do this, day. you know, uh, have this live coverage. Because usually, I mean, Ezra, mm -hmm. you and I would do this at a at a competition. Mm -hmm. um, but to do this during a free surf, pretty special for to have that opportunity to surf line. And yeah, right on surf line, putting this forum up. And, uh, you know, to all you fans out there, tune in, you know, put your thing on alert. I know you guys are all surf line members. And if you're not, man, be a member today. 20 foot plus a series brought to you by Surfline Heavy Water Surf, chronicling the world's best big wave surfers and the heaviest waves on earth. So, join us, gang. This is just the first of many. And, uh, they're going to be teaming up with Salt and Air Studios. And, yeah, 
yeah gang we're gonna be taking a break soon so you guys just stay tuned we got more big wave action and we got a whole nother crew i noticed there's gonna be a shift change people are gonna be coming in and going out so you guys stay tuned thanks for joining us sir flying salt and air studios see you in a minute I'm not really a contest guy. I'm more of like a thrill guy. And so I like thrill and I like progression and I like the equipment and I like the safety. I like the life vest. Um, just made this helmet, just got it done the other day. It took me two years to make. And so I feel like that's going to be the first helmet that you're ever going to be able to surf jaws in and, uh, you know, Nazare, whatever the biggest waves, you know, the helmet's a great idea, but it needs to be matched to the level of surfing that we're doing and so they're great for like going kayaking and getting hit in the head with your buddy's paddle yeah that's fine you're not going 30 miles an hour down the face of the wave with offshore wind coming up and then catching your nose purling and then just slapping your head so when you do that just the, the extra little bit of dread anything the the middle of that equation is your neck and so it's like you know you're trying to protect your head and and then all of a sudden the inevitable comes you eat eat it and so the fact is it has to be non-thought. It has to be so tight and so fit that when you do your worst wipeout, you don't even want to think about it. You just have to go into the water head first and it's going to do its job. The helmets right now are pretty insufficient as far as when you land and hit the water. So the helmet might work good, but when you're trying to protect your head, you don't want to break your neck in the equation. And so really the safety of the helmet, it comes down to the fit in the design. And, um, and so that's what I've been working on just in the last bit is just trying to make the strongest, smallest, sleekest, lightest, uh, you know, head protector that you can have. And, uh, you know, it's Kevlar and carbon with D3O foam, which is a hardening on impact foam. And so technically you'll be able to take the worst wipeout you could have and not even know something's on your head. And then when something does hit your head, you'll have a Kevlar and carbon cap which is technically bulletproof. Hopefully with a group effort of people and like the progression, hopefully we could take the helmet and make it right. Just like the impact vest went to the, uh, you know, blow up vest. Um, just like the single fin went to the, you know, twin fin to the thruster to the four fin, whatever. You know, it's all part of uh, bettering our sport, making it so the kids can take it to the new level. Thanks for joining us on this amazing day where the eddy was going to go, but it never went. But we're going to take the opportunity to have a beautiful day of big wave riding. Men and Wahine that ride mountains. Joining me is Isaiah Walker. My name is Ezra Rodriguez. We'll be calling the play for plays. We are joined by Salt and Air Studios, Surfline, Future Fins. And thank you for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday. Yep. Aloha, this is beautiful view of the valley and it look here as far as the eye can see is this beautiful piece of property that's owned by the Kamehameha Schools. Oh wow. And uh, Waimea Valley is a beautiful place. You can go um, visit there if you're visiting our island, whether you're local here or if you're a tourist. Um, um, Waimea Valley is a beautiful place to go back. There's beautiful waterfalls, botanical gardens, native plants. Um, so there's a lot of beauty here, right here where we're at Waimea Bay. And Waimea Bay is uh, known for its big wave surfing. And so today Surfline is bringing us 20 foot plus, this massive swell here. And uh, we're blessed with some great waves and we've seen some good rides today. Some just recently actually saw some really late drops and some successful rides. And so pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, great day to celebrate big wave riding. Great forum, 20 foot plus. We 
were watching by Surfline as we got a beautiful drone footage and they're headed towards the lineup. We still got a lot of surfers out in the lineup. We also, if you're just joining us, have the Wahine. They are surfing for the digital comp Red Bull Magnitude. So there's a bunch of select Wahines, as you can see Makana, Makani Edric out there, along with Kiala Kenley and Kaya Waldman out there in the blue helmet. Also, you have Polly Ralda, no, excuse me, Polly Ralda out there in the blue helmet and Kaya Waldman out there in the light purple board. So a lot of Wahine out in the lineup today at Waimea. Good stuff. Yeah, and so Wahine is the Hawaiian word for woman and uh, our female surfers are definitely um, part of the surfing experience and tradition also in Hawaii. We were talking earlier, Ezra, about mm -hmm. some of the research that I did um, when when writing writing the book Waves of Resistance. It actually started off as a dissertation for a PhD um, program that I, was, that I was doing. And just in going through a lot of these, the, the annals of oral history that, that are have been recorded in, in, in newspapers and such uh, from the 1800s, uh, so many stories of wahine, or women mm -hmm. surfers. Uh, talked about one of them earlier, Ka'ili o Kalao Kekoa from uh, from Kauai. And she loved the, big speaking waves. of which, here we have a water shot of some of our our female wahine chargers. That is Kaya Waldman in her black Patagonia wetsuit. Riding, I don't know, that thing to her looks like a 9-2 gun. It's probably 9-0, nine, 9-1. Nine oh, nine yeah, some of these boards, I've seen some 11 footers. These guys yeah. ride some big boards out here. You need that extra No more excuse right? with the 11 footer, you better <laughs> catch it. <laughs> yeah. But you also need to position yourself too. That's why, you know, riding bigger boards and stuff like that is always good. You know, as these um, athletes switch over from their hot dog boards onto their guns or some of these big wave riders don't even surf small waves you know everyone's different in their did in their you, surfing did you say hot dog boards yeah oh, yeah that's old school language right there that's awesome yeah so yeah so um yeah so a lot of female surfers in in hawaii's history and also hawaii's current right it was mm -hmm. really cool to see surfing still shared amongst male female young and old and we've seen it um, this week. We were over at Pipeline earlier at the yep. Lee Backdoor Shootout. And there was one heat where Dino Miranda and Mananalu Chandler were in the same heat, probably yep. separated by 50 years. Yeah, that was awesome. In fact, when um, the first European to come to Hawaii, as, as recorded in history, is uh, Captain James Cook. Mm -hmm. James Cook was a British sea captain and he, he took three different expeditions into the Pacific where he charted and mapped a lot of the, the islands of the sea, um, to, you know, charting it amongst Europeans, right? Mm -hmm. the Polynesians or Pacific Islanders, the Moana people from Oceania, in other words. Uh, they, they charted it, but they used the stars to chart it. It was what's called zenith stars. So uh, a navigator would, would know where an island was by mapping it through the sky. So Hawaii, for example, Hawaii Zenith Star is called Hopulea, which is also the name mm. of the voyaging canoe that was established in 1975, 1976, the first voyages that Eddie Aikau was a part of, by the way. But nice, yes. Yeah, but a Zenith Star um, is the way that they would chart and mark them. But, but so we have um, stories of these voyagers that came to Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, gang. Thanks for joining us. Special day today. And so one of these, Chris, um, excuse me, Captain James Cook, who comes to Hawaii in 1778, 1779, while he's here, he describes in his journal um, surfing. Yeah. And hitting Nalu. And one of the things he talks about, it talks about how, like, all, you know, everybody was, was doing it, whether it's male, female, young and old. In fact, one of, one of my favorite stories is he mentions that when he's, um, he's at Kona at the time and he sees uh, there's a big swell it's this time of year in the winter where you get these big waves that come in and he saw a group of young children playing in these large waves and he said it def 
when he first saw that, he feared for their lives. He was like, oh my goodness, the, this is, you know, this is dangerous and they're going to drown. And then they came up after getting pounded by these big waves and they were laughing. And his brain, he couldn't comprehend it. Like, he, it, it blew his mind. And he wrote in his journal, he said, if any of my men were in that predicament, they would have given up hope for living and would have just died. That's why I love being a surfer. Only a surfer knows the feeling. Ah, he said, and here we have children, these Hawaiian children, getting blasted by these big waves. Mm -hmm. We're watching some of our surfers, most of our surfers. Knowing how to fact. fall, knowing how to play with it. And he said when they came up laughing, he just couldn't understand how that was possible. Well, I used to love saying the saying, some people just like to play in the ocean and some people like to get, you know, just like to get wet and some people can feel the ocean, you know? And which also, I mean, as a reminder for those visitors here uh, that you see some of these expert surfers mm -hmm. making it look fun and easy doesn't mean it's easy for you. Yes. <laughs> So we have our lifeguards reminding people, like, yes, this looks fun, but four years not ago, you. before COVID came, and you know, it's a little bit of COVIDina's fault. Two to three million people just cut in line on disciplines, you know, uh, <laughs> tennis, whether it be tennis or anything, and then there's a whole bunch of new surfers. But you know, I like to like jump into any sport or anything, but take a good history lesson before I come into your turf, you know. Here comes so, something. Here we have a rider up. Beautiful wave. Narrow stance, holding it through the bumps and the lumps. Kicking out with confidence. So much water out there, so much positioning, so much prepping. As some of these athletes out in the water probably didn't get any sleep. Everybody prepares different, but when you're like a light sleeper with a lot on your mind, some of these big wave athletes don't get a hint of sleep. And there they are, all waiting for the bomb. So this is, you know, I, I was telling you, I, I taught class this morning, so I work at BYU mm -hmm. Hawaii. Uh, after I finished uh, my PhD in California, I came back home. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Hilo, actually, and I worked at UH Hilo for the first year, but then I, I've been a professor at BYU Hawaii for 16 years. Uh, recently, I'm a, a moved into administration where I'm the academic vice president at the school. But, um, you know, uh, I forgot where I was going. Oh, now I know. I had to teach my class. I have a class of actually, I, I, I teach a freshman class would mm -hmm. kind of help orient students. There's 200 of them actually in this one particular. Most of our classes are small. and uh, But this one class I had early this morning and then we got the call like, hey, come, we're going to do the surf line live. And mm -hmm. I was like, Okay, try wait. I got, <laughs> I have a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta take care of some things, but um, but you know, it's it's kind of cool to to go from 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 work to to something like this where I'm able to share essentially doing the same kinds of things where I'm yep. still teaching a oh, element yeah. of Hawaiian history, but to a different sort of audience. So, but what makes it more challenging is that at school I have pretty much a captive audience, and and here, um, we keep taking these breaks as the waves are are coming, which is awesome. The problem with that, I can't remember mm -hmm. if I finished a story or if I didn't finish a story, and I don't know. I'm pretty I, I, sure I, I, you I'm told your students, before I leave, you guys are going to tune in to Surfline, yeah. and we're going to continue the <laughs> continue. class while you're over here with Brothers in the booth. Well, you have to remind <laughs> me, because I hate when I start something, and then I get all excited when I see somebody on some big waves, and then no, I, know. I never finish it, and then people will sometimes text me like, so what happened to the rest no, of the I story? No, I know. Love, I love your stories. Yeah, I know. we got to make sure that we finish them. But yeah, they look like they got a little bit of a lull. And from the feeling of things, I mean, I know we're in paradise, but you know, when you've been out in the water for like four, five hours, you get a little bit chilly. Uh, I'm sure there's some people with purple lips out there. Oh, there he is on his brand new jet ski, one of my favorites, Nolan Kelana. And there's Brada Jeff, city and county lifeguard, all of these Bradas right here. There you go. Ah, oh, Nolan. West Side Legacy. And guess what? He's probably, that thing has sounds on it. BBL. <laughs> you know how the West Side booms? Yeah. His jet ski's louder than the whole beach. It's like so. The those brothers on the big motorcycles that get the oh big speakers. My, man, so at um, Melvin Pu'u's Waterman Championship, we were getting picked up 
getting lifted out to the buoy by Nolan listening to just the best tune. <laughs> You know, Brother, he looked comfy there. Oh, he is super comfortable. Got his feet the guy up, is animal water rescue, like we talk about Dukanamoku and Eddie Aikau, lifesavers at a at a huge magnitude. That's you're looking at that guy, him and Je Jeff. And the legacy of it's kind of cool too. We've been talking about so we've we've mentioned like Ben Ipa and then mm -hmm. his sons Akila and. Uh, Duke Marvin and Foster. We talk about the Fosters and Kavika Foster, his nephew, yeah. and ha Love Foster, Kavika. and a bunch of, and then the Bloomfield Ohana is connected mm -hmm. there. So it's kind of cool. How the, I mean, the North Shore is this community, uh, and in Hawaii, we have these kind of families. And so the mm -hmm. Keolanas, I mean, definitely a legacy mm -hmm. family. Big um, part with Terry, Uncle Terry. Yeah. And yeah, it's good to see. I didn't know that uh, he was out there. You know, Nolan is like the kind of guy where he doesn't need to be in the ocean. You can be crashed, sandwiched in your car on the freeway. He will walk barefoot over to the car. Nobody will be, do and he'll rip you right out of the car and save your life. I mean, that kind of stuff is like, you know what I mean? He Wait, didn't that happen something. recently? Recently, yeah, his wife posted it. It was the funniest thing. Look at my husband, freeway, freeway barefoot, right at the scene, just taking the person out of the car, making sure. They're getting um, rescued. So always good to have these brothers on hand. I didn't know they were out in the lineup. So, oh, here we go. Here we There's go. There's a bomb. That is. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no. And just like you were talking about the wind, that is the worst situation. That thing blew him right off the back. Jerked his elbow on the takeoff. Wow, it'd almost be better. I mean, you know, Send pop it. up quick to your feet and just, you know. Yeah. Then you start doing the Jedi balance off your off your board. But <laughs> man, that it's it's hard out there. I see the ruts. Yeah. Once yeah. they think they're like, okay. But as spectators, we want to see him go over the falls, huh? Oh, uh, sort of like, come on, go. I know, and Easier then you gotta take into done. account like. You know, everybody's trying to respect one another, everyone one another space, you know what I mean? Everybody has something different in their mind, but I know there's some brothers out there that are gonna sell you a lemon. Here we go, let's see go, what happens. Go, happened. go, 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 bro. Paddle, paddle, then he laid down and then, oh. No, that was a good choice. He got out of there early. That had a weird warble to it. Yeah, but he's lucky it wasn't a super massive one. You that know what I mean? That was pretty big, though. It was big. Look at this, look at this. But you could afford oh. to go over the falls on that one, maybe. Oh. <laughs> nah. That angle, no. But, wow. Surf line. Wow. So you got uh, Eric Eppel out there on somebody's jet ski. So Nolan, do you know, I mean, he's the grandson, right? Of Yep. Wasn't he kind of hanaied by the grandpa? Yep. So raised by Uncle Buff then. Oh, yeah. Uncle Buff raises all his seeds. And then, you know, it's like always a big family thing. They all take care of one another. Amazing legacy out there. I had a personal, like, experience with, with uh, watching up Uncle Buff one time and just kind of really stuck with me like the the connection he has with the ocean especially Makaha mm -hmm. so I don't surf Makaha a lot because I live on, clear on the other side I live oh in yeah you're, Punalu you're is like far as far away. as you can get mm -hmm. from there and um but my kids when they was growing up we take them over to the Rao Sun Menihuni contest so yep so we're out there we spend a weekend it was usually on Thanksgiving weekend so we sleep out back when they used to have it's the back Makaha. on this year oh yeah yep. oh good yep. they had the Makaha resort Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. It's no longer yeah. there anymore, but that, it was like... Oh, by the golf course. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that area. Anyway, so we make a weekend out of our Thanksgiving for years. And one time, we, you know, we went and surfed before sunset, the, you know, the night before the contest. And the you know, waves were pretty small, like three, four feet mm -hmm. Hawaiian. And, but it was kind of slow. And then right before sunset, Uncle Buff grabs like a, looks like a, uh, a pipo board. Mm -hmm. Comes kicking out. And I mean, his uncle pretty old, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. And um, 
you know, could barely walk down to the water's edge. Yep. But as soon as he got in the water, it's like, you know, like a monk seal, and they like, yep. they, they have a hard time on land, but as soon as they get in the water, they're like. I totally remember this time when he was pipe boarding a lot, yeah. So then he, he, he zooms out past everybody. Like, we were all sitting pretty much in the same area. He was way out past everyone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Uncle, uh, I don't know. If there's no waves out there. You know what I mean? Went so past the past, hole, like, yeah. Way out there. Yep. And then it's like the ocean knew that he arrived. Yeah. And this wave comes in out of nowhere, comes right to him. He catches it, just blazes by everybody on this pipe board. Flying. Flying. But, you know, he has that ehu hair, you know? Oh, yeah. And it's like blowing in the wind, and he's just like got this cool like look to him. Big Hawaiian, dark skin, flying across this green turquoise wave as the sun was setting. <laughs> rides right up to the sand. Pow. Pow. <laughs> that's just like, well, that's just majestic legend style. Yeah. Like, oh, where did Uncle Buff go? Oh, he pow. He's got a good yeah, one. Got one. That's all he needed. Back up onto the beach. Guy is definitely king of his people. He's just like unreal. He's done so much for his community internationally and just for surfers. Actually, Clyde Aikau tells a story of him winning the first Eddie event in, what was it, I think it was 1986 or something like that, mm -hmm. at Waimea. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 1986 it was. Yeah. Uh, and he tells this story that he attributes it to um, something similar. So he, he paddled out and he saw these two turtles and they were like way deeper and way further out than everybody in the pack so you, you know we've been watching the surfers like sit in a certain mm -hmm. area here imagine one of them just sort of veers off and goes way out on his own mm -hmm. he said he was following these turtles he felt like the turtles were kind of talking to him saying like hey come follow me Psst. come and here and i'll show you so how he big did he listened he just went oh, well follow these turtles sat out by the turtles and the biggest wave of the day came he caught it and got i mean you need more than one wave but he caught that one yeah. wave and that was like one of the highest scores of the day he said later on in the day the exact same thing happened in his heat we saw the two turtles again he wow. follow, followed them that's interesting. way out and then caught another and those were the two best waves of the event and he won the event so i mean he, he when he tells that story he says you know that like he believed it was his kind of like the we have what's called almakua in yep. hawaii mm -hmm. where like you're you know, you have like a guardian that's sort of I there. Like that. They pretty much told him, "Come out here, and you're gonna send it." Yep. And uh, <laughs> and he he feels also his, his way, like his brother, kind of communicating to him of where oh, to go. Oh, I got you, I got you. Yeah. And kind of cool, you know. And it's that's interesting way cause, cool. Because we we you know we tell these moolelas, tell a lot of stories. Look at this one. Let's see this. There Beautiful. you go. Wonder if that was the same surfer that's got redemption here. Slow stance. I haven't seen all white jersey yet. But yeah. But to me, those are like modern day mo'olelos. You know what I mean? Like, because mm -hmm. sometimes you think, well, did that really happen? You know, the lady mm -hmm. calling the giant waves and smashing, you know, the, these stories yep. that we hear and the bird made it and all that kind of stuff. But it is because there's so many signs and superstitions as a surfer. Right. There's so much stuff. And it's the way you interpret things, right? Mm -hmm. the way you, I mean, anybody else could have been like, oh, I just got lucky and the wave came to me. But it's a very Hawaiian perception of, and perspective to have the way Clyde tells that story. Well, like, he was noticing I followed these turtles, I like it, and that yeah. was my brother telling me where to go. So it's just kind of a mindset. Kind of yeah. A yep, and some people are just too busy-headed for those signs. You know what I mean? You know, as humans, you don't want to be that busy-headed person to where you can't pick up on any of those signs. Those are very important. But, yeah, so Clyde has only won it once in 1986 and then again on the off year, yeah, where they ran half day, I believe. Uh, I can't remember. I know Shane Dorian did pretty well that day. I'm not too sure what happened on the half. I can't remember the half day. I just know but from I, my... I know that 2016, when it was massive, mm -hmm. and Clyde was like 63 years old... He bruised or broke a rib, and he took... Surfed it. Surfed it. I mean, Went, surfed my hat's off to... That was massive. He was actually in a heat, I heard, from Uncle Terry during all those big waves came in. Yeah. He was out there. Well, the cleanup sets. Yeah. Like, you know, ain't no saying for Uncle Clyde. <laughs> 
I thought it was like Intense, getting man. old enough for social security checks. No, 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 and then you see him giving lessons and stuff like that. I mean, the kind of cracks he got and how he reached deep to go out there and just, you know, he's really competitive still at his age. Uh, wow, the endurance, cool the stamina. See. Which is something to, like, says something too about our sport, you know, like that you can, you can enjoy surfing till you're old person you know, I mean? yeah. yeah like uh, you, you know, know you see pictures dad. of duke honomoku when he was right. in his seven well yeah i you know I, when he was old i can't mm -hmm. remember if late 60s or early 70s but um still out there surfing yeah look at this one. Oh, we just get better the longer we marinate in the water and then by three hour warm-up you got to go home watch the kids already but you're ready for rip by that point <laughs> Yeah, you guys are watching. If you guys are just joining us, we are watching Surf Lines. This is 20 foot plus brought to you by Salt and Air Studios. Thank you to Sea Do, Future Fins, and Red Bull. Also out in the lineup right now, Isaiah is the Red Bull Magnitude with a bunch of women internationally competing for the Red Bull Magnitude Big Wave Contest. It's a digital format where they turn in their rides. So they're trying to get some big rides on the board today. And they've been doing really well at it. As uh, we still haven't seen the peak of the swell. We've got a couple people paddling over this wave. Um, for me and Isaiah Walker, we'd just seen that one where the girl had to throw her board over. And that was pretty oh. intense that water shot right so not too much carnage today from us watching the monitor here we go oh ooh, thing faded him left he's going back right that's the houdini disappearance oh, trick getting right there now totally you see me no you, you don't yeah here's another live one nice drop picking up 15 to 20 miles an hour right off the bat Trying to work this through to the shore break. Nice fade. Looks like it's there's. You're right, as we were talking about before we went to break the last mm -hmm. break. It like looks like there's a new shift mm -hmm. uh, that's out in the water. You notice a new surface. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it's people have tagged in and mm -hmm. some have went checked out, but. Um, seems like maybe there's more people now in the water look uh, last time we just saw that wave looked I like a lot so. more bodies in the water than there were earlier yeah it seems like there's an, some new in that pack most definitely a little shift change here we go a few people paddling for this one Let's see if anyone can get it nice takeoff nice positioning it's a smaller wave gonna dissipate and dissolve real quick it's that classic silhouette Oof. backside attack feeling this board yeah so here at Waimea Bay and uh, and we talked about how it was the almost eddy today, but they decided not to. And I don't know, I'd, I'd say that was the right call. I mean, the waves are firing and it's good, but you know, usually for the eddy, they reserve it where it's maxing and conditions are perfect. Right now, look, you know, we're having some definitely some contestable rides there mm -hmm. we're seeing. But I think earlier too, the winds were a little uncertain. They were a little more from the north. Uh, it looks more trade winds now mm -hmm. it's really not too bad though yeah yeah i mean not as what i was kind of thinking it was going to be i thought it was going to be a little bit more howling and hey gang if you guys are out there you know i know you're watching us live on surfline but hey man go subscribe on our youtube plug and uh and uh make sure you guys like and subscribe so go check us out on youtube gang as well and there we go nice shot from we got guys spinning around a couple wahine spinning around on the inside 
We've got a paddler committed just a little bit five yards too far out as this wave will roll over itself. Beautiful mist as you can see that mirage of the rainbow. Nice oh, camera it's angle. A frothy one. one. Yeah. Big for an insider, it looked like for a little bit and it just kind of disappeared, but. Well, here we go. Going nice. back side, grabbing rail. Like you said, Isaiah, the thing was trying to drop out on him. He was ready to just hold on to his rail. Now, I mean, why may I, you're less likely to hit the bottom than say, pipeline right but i guess the helmet maybe protects you from the board hitting you in the head yeah or uh yeah or um some someone running you over some creatures that don't belong out there i would <laughs> say that's the helmet for sure if you find the bottom at waimea i mean you know you're charging hard or doing something wrong but that's way down there yeah i guess that's why i mean we're used to seeing the helmets at pipeline but i'm you know, wearing a helmet at Waimea, I guess it would it wouldn't be to protect you from the reef. I but think lately too, um, in the in in the beginning of the session, once we started up, you noticed um, a person was riding by on the whitewater, and you kind of think that you're safe and you're riding out of this Waimea whitewater, and then a board comes out of nowhere. You know right. what I mean? Some of these people they come out with a ten foot leash, and the leash is twenty five feet by the end of their <laughs> session. And when it gets stretched out into a spaghetti competition leash, I would say hemo that leash already. Don't let your kids use it. Don't let your wife use it. The thing will just harness around the reef and tie itself a knot. So always make sure you buy good equipment. It's, it's uh, good to spend that extra money on the top brands. Let me tell you, surfing is no joke. Oh, in the 60s and 70s, they didn't even have leashes. They're surfing out here. I, I, admi I admire that. I used to try to tell my dad. We got some, about some aloha that. here, shakas. I'd rather swim from my board and learn. Yep, got some, some lionies. Some women surfers. With their gladiator helmets. Is that Laura Enever? Looks yep. like it. Yep. So this marking on my yellow, paper, yellow, yellow, the yellow board. board. Yeah, with an orange jacket. We see you, Laura. Let's go. Is these the tie-dye sleeves we had? Um, someone yep. Had? Okay, so I had tie-dye sleeves, so turquoise. Katie Mai McConnell. So that is Katie Lorna. May. Maybe that was good. Yep, that's her. White helmet, that's the one. So Katie Kate, May. Katie and May. And Laura Inover, chilling. Chilling. Good to see it. Talking it over. Elevating women's big wave riding. Those riders just got blasted. Also out the back with them is Kiala Kenley along with Makani Edric. We feel that we've seen a few waves from Paige Elms earlier. Haven't possibly. But, yeah, possibly. Although she might be at Piahi today. I wonder what Jaws is doing right now. I did hear a few guys in the production crew, even Eric Eppel. Do you know Jaws uh, Jaws is firing today? Look at right? this. Look at this. Oh beautiful ride. Oh, Two drones, almost had a drone collision there. <laughs> Watch out, you don't like bump salt in air studios, drone. Oh, well, here we oh. go, Wahine's up and riding. So that is Polly Ralda in the blue helmet, sharing a wave with her friend. Red Bull Magnitude. Thank you to Red Bull sponsoring the event today. Surfline, Sultan Air Studios, Future oh, Fins. There we go. Nice ride by the person in deep. Oh, these two are dancing, doing the dancing, dance. Yeah. I think that's Kiala Kenley out on the shoulder. Really did look like her there. Saw her last Instead year, of a Huntington hop, she did a full-on bunny hop bunny molly. Hop. <laughs> a 
Honolulu. Yep, the Honolulu. Yeah, we saw her last year at the pipeline charge in the back door shortly. Here we go. Oh no, that is the the female surfer we we're just talking about here, uh, Katie May. Yep, Katie May. There we go. Look at that bomb. Nice as they get totally planed by the white water. There's a nice drop. Here's the drone that almost crashed our other drone. Oh, <laughs> ah, our drone is safe way <laughs> high up in the air. <laughs> We're pulling back. <laughs> Oh, we got one of the best pilots. Brought a pat on that drone. He's like, okay, it's getting top, hot and heavy. Top gun action. Huh? Don't make me walk out on the beach with uh, the the lifeguard uh, bullhorn. <laughs> Private airway. <laughs> Woodchuck to squirrel coming over. <laughs> we need to clear the airway for Sultan Air Studios. Bro, Woodchuck to gray squirrel. That was yeah. from uh, In Living Color. That was <laughs> Classic old one. <laughs> and more waves coming in. I think you're clear, Sultan Air Drone. Come on back. <laughs> Remember the time, I think, last year at the back door shoot up, an unidentified drone showed up? And then oh. I don't know if somebody shot it out of the sky or something. Oh my gosh, but how's the Hui backdoor shootout? That's private Sultan Air Airways. Remember, the drone yeah, yeah. kept coming, and then I see the uncles open up the fence, and they both split left to right. And I was like, one more time on the, on the beach mic. You guys, I'm being really nice. I'm just letting you guys know, private airways guys get caught i already told uncles, you guys a couple are, times are hunting you and up. then another name their names they came ezra we got him <laughs> we're all good we all good <laughs> oh, where is he <laughs> where is he <laughs> no worry no worry no drone zone i loved it that's super funny like, you know at some well, events uncle, you know do you have a new uh, drone now yeah, or yeah yeah no i know you could ask him what we'll shoot hey oh. there's luke luke shepherdson north shore surf shop Works at North Shore Surf Shop and is one of Liam McNamara's nephews. Uncle Liam McNamara has um, been helping Clyde I. Cow, being really involved in the Eddie Would Go and Eddie Foundation. And Liam McNamara always raising the youth over here, always taking the young kids under his wing. Uh, yeah, giving him jobs and with equipment. It, yeah, with Luke, I remember since he was small, like Liam mm -hmm. really has been kind of bringing him under his wing. and Even and a town nephew of mine, Iala. Yeah, Iala Stewart. Yeah, he just, you know, and, and, and Iala's and brother. He never even stopped there. Like, when I grew up around on Quicksilver with Andy and Bruce, he took care of Andy and Bruce. He took care of so many celebrity surfers. Got them acquainted with the North Shore. Yeah, that's what I love about. I don't know if it's just the Hawaii surf thing or if it's a surfer thing or, and if you watch um, that recent film that came out uh, through the doggy door. I yep. It the oh, I love it. Good job, guys, on that. Yeah, well, I uh, haven't seen it, but I already know Sheldon and everybody involved in the movie. I can't wait. It just really speaks to kind of Hawaiian culture of hanai. So hanai is this kind of practice of raising someone else's kid, right? And yeah. It's, and you know, it's a very co common custom. In fact, in a lot of a lot of the old days in Hawaii, you know, you let's say you had a a sibling who couldn't have children, but you have plenty of kids. Yep. You know, no, exactly. you share. You know, just add water. You, just you give, get plenty. You know, you kid. give your your. You know, sometimes kids would bounce between homes, and mm -hmm. but that story, you know, of Sheldon, and we're talking about um, some of these kids in the water, like Luke and others that have been kind of hanaied by these. Mm -hmm. surfing families and that Sheldon Paishan story is all about that how and it wasn't it, you know it was Mason Ho who kind of brought him under his wing but it but this, it's also like I mean um Kianua Singh's family and so many others uh who, who you know takes a village to raise a child concept and Mokaha is definitely 
been that way for, and that story of Sheldon that's what I love about it's it still it's that way Hawaiian way of just mm -hmm. like you know what you just gotta take care of her, take yeah. the village uh, to raise a kid sometimes I mean there's good things about that but sometimes also if you're a kid it oh, also yeah. means any uncle can slap you at any oh, time. Oh, but don't bite the uncle's hands that are going to help you over there. You're going to be doing yard work until <laughs> you're the kind 21. Let me tell you, they have a great program out there. You know what I mean? All you got to do is ask, and you're going to get help. But just don't, you know what I mean? Don't do none of that awkward, chronic stuff to the uncles. So they're always ready to take care. And, you know, Sheldon is hanaid by plenty uncles and aunties. And uh, he makes me proud. Good surfer. I've watched him as a little boy. I just admire Brian Pacheco. And I said, look at you now. Look at you now. Unreal. Local hero. Him and Mason are classic together. It's good to see. That was one, I have to admit, that was one hard part of watching the film when you saw some folks who didn't pull out of it. Know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so they so go right back into it. We try try to take care of each other. That's who we are as surfers of the surf okay. community. Take care of each other. But we're gonna take a break and come back to you with more live action here at Waimea Bay. Yep. Come back to big sets. Aloha. The week leading up to it, just um, how big is it gonna be? What's the period? What's the wind? trying to find out um, who you're going to go with, do you have boards there, you know, booking flights, accommodation, is there safety? So just, you know, basically the week leading up is the most stressful, the surfing part's the easy part. Uh, I can eat plenty before big waves. I'm one of those people that can eat and just go out and surf. So, but I, I do try and keep it like light. So, you know, for some, you know, maybe a protein shake or, um, you know, just something like that to keep it light. And honestly, these days, I think for me, like getting in the water and surfing a lot, Surfing right in the backyard here at Sunset Beach is a uh, really good training. Uh, and obviously I, I like riding my bike up in the mountains. I like swimming. Uh, I've got my you know, sauna ice bath in the house for recovery. So, you know, as long as I'm active, doing at least like one session a day and surfing once a day, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. Well, when you get to my age, like 45, the sauna and ice is what's gonna keep you going. It's, uh, you know, there's a theory, just you uh, shock your body um, with the hot and then the cold going back and forth and it creates these shock proteins that help you know really um activate your recovery so i love it it's something i do every single night um put the kids to sleep jump in that and go to bed Surfline Live with uh, Surfline's program of 20 foot plus and we're here on the North Shore beautiful drone angle here from Salt and Air Studios of Waimea Bay as you can see here on the left or the uh, west side of the bay beautiful angle here and we have right now we have live surfing coming to you this was uh, a forecasted day by Surfline that the waves were going to be 20 foot plus we almost had the Eddie Aikau event yeah. and they decided um, a day before, I mean, the, the green light was on, but then they ended up pulling back from it. Uh, mainly some uncertainty with the wind and we did see the wind this morning was, wasn't quite right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, probably half the day was, was a little too bumpy, but this afternoon as we've been watching, the winds look good, That's sets are out there and it's doing really well. So, um, I'm Isaiah Walker. Joining me here is uh, Ezra Rodriguez, and Aloha. we're just enjoying this afternoon with you, bringing you this live surfline uh, footage of Waimea Bay. Yep, all these people out here are definitely going to catch the biggest wave they possibly can, and they've been working up to it for some time now, as they got an amazing new series, 20 foot plus. The series is brought to you by Heavy. 
surf line and heavy water surf chronicling the world's best big wave surfers and the heaviest waves on earth and today we are here at Waimea Bay there is a bunch of wahine surfing for the Red Bull magnitude and um, this heavy water surf founding members there's a ton of them I've been naming the list thank you for Jamie Mitchell creating this with uh, Zach Porter you got uh, guys like e Ian Walsh, Jamie Sterling, Jojo Roper, John Mel, Peter Mel, Hustina DuPont, Kai Lenny, Lucas Chumbo Chianka, Luca Padua, Makua Rothman, Mason Barnes, Matahi Drolet, Matt Becker, Mikey Red, uh, Mick Corbett, uh, Nick Lamb, Aaron Gold, LB Lair, Alex Botello, Annie Rickert. And uh, yeah, nice. the list goes on. Yeah. Nathan Florence, Nazo Gonzalez, P uh, Polly Ralda, Ross Clark Jones, one of my favorite big wave surfers. And don't forget about this guy. He's from your town, uh, Tori Meister. Oh, oh man, that. the guy charges Trevor Carlson and Tyler LaRond and Will Scudin. Mm. Yeah, I've heard all these names. Got to watch a few of you guys surf. Scotty Bredersen. Russell Burke, congratulations for being such a, a, a prestige class of, you know, big wave riders, you know. Here's a big wave rider right here on this one at the bay. Bottom Beautiful turn. bottom turn. Oh. What? Mid-face cut? Carve. Imploding on the back of him. I think Beautiful that's the first ride. legit turn we've seen all day. That was. How was the size of the wave, you know, in the expression session, put him right up second next to Makua Rothman, maybe the best ride I seen today into the shore break, that's why. That was and cool. it was kind of bigger one, you know, if the right. wave even went into the shore break, that tells you that the wave was big, but he also picked the perfect line. It was also a goofy footer that kind of side slipped on the wave and made the drop. That was a that one, highlight. But that was pretty recent, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, like half an hour ago. Yeah, that was a great ride. Like, that was a sweet turn. Mm -hmm. Nice bottom turn and put some rail on it. It's hard to put a Waimea gun on rail. Oh, it is. So I much mean, foam. I But I admire the guys that actually go and take their Waimea guns and they go surf all kinds of waves, small waves, just to get the feel of the Here gun. Go. Let's see from the drone angle that bottom turn and then a little carve under the lip there. Boom, almost had to dodge the ski. That bottom turn again, the turn. Under the lip. Nice. It's hard to tell. Yeah, uh, I don't think you want to do an under the lip hood snap <laughs> over here. Not on that bowl, man. Not just like a waterfall falling down on you. We were talking about some highlights in history here at, at Waimea. One that definitely stands out to me when I was... Uh, a high school kid or maybe even middle school but when um brock little was uh, oh, was brock. at in the event i think that was 86 anyway and he was getting barreled out here at 30 foot waimea there's a poster charging. isn't there yeah hic poster oh, look, at this, a look at this set in deep. the back there we go oh that's a big one that is a big one. That one's uh, pretty hard to hang on to once you drop into the flats right there. Unless you're shoulder hopping it. It's the only way out of that one. But yeah, Brock Little. Um, you know, in that event in the 86. It was in like the earlier rounds um, when he was just packing barrels. And that was, I mean, people weren't doing that, you know. And, yeah. Uh, as far as bottom turning and pulling into waves at Waimea, and it's still very rare to see, but occasionally, you know, you'll see some guys, John John and Mason Ho and others that are mm -hmm. trying to get barreled out mm -hmm. here, but Brock was, he was pulling just doing in his thing, yeah. big barreling waves. There was also that one, he didn't make it, it was similar to the wave Mason had in 2016, but just like it was closing out mm -hmm. the bay and he caught it and he looked like he was making it, but there's something about just I think there's just too much momentum and he just didn't ride out of it, but. Here we go, replay. 
little chatter on the bottom fades it into the rut cuts it whitewater takes advantage of him Brock Little has got, had so many disciplines I, I got to watch him at a old professional surf comp he would just uh, hot dog too <laughs> you know in the town and country pro amps when I got to see him Sunny Kaipo Hakias all surfing queens and then uh, seeing them out on the North Shore and then just posters all over my wall. But Brock is one of those guys, too, up in the mountain. I mean, motocross. It, motocross yeah. and just dirt biking. Tony Moniz will tell you the stories. Brock could go deep, walk his bike over trees, take you to places maybe you don't want to be on a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. That was Brock Little, man. Yeah, he definitely was... Sure. And in Waimea Bay, he was the guy uh, just mm -hmm. setting the, the bar for big wave surfing. Another hard charger was Todd Chesser as well. I mean, I've seen some stuff of him at the bay, but just big waves all around. He would just go Toto Santos, right. Sunset, Pipeline. And just how he kind Mavericks. of mentored that momentum generation. I know. When I watched that movie, I did. I mean, yeah, he 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 was a big thing to those guys, and it all helped surfing. So shout out to all those guys, his families, aloha, yeah. aloha to Uncle China Uimura's family, that guy has helped so many surfers, whether it be longboard or shortboard. He has come into your life and guided you and uh, has always given us uh, hope as surfers and tried to better things for all of us. And, uh, yeah, out the back. Oh, yeah, see, so there's more people in the there lineup, I think. There is more people, yeah. I mean, it just takes a couple guys. It just changes the tide, you know, those certain ones. Rip the extension cord right out of the wall, and then the waves go flat. But nah, not today. We got a lot of swell on offer. And, uh, I thought I was gonna see a little bit more carnage and drop-ins, but hey, everybody's you know behaving. Yeah, I lo love it. You know, water etiquette. Don't ever lose it, and it's important to be cordial. Be be before you even let your friends from out of town leave to the beach, give them a heads up. Give them a little tutorial. I've always thought that uh, with a couple sponsors, there all should be like a, a nice size booklet just at every surf shop, free like Free Surf Magazine, you know, right mm -hmm. next to that, but a little booklet with like, you know, it's like a comic, you know, really good illustration, but about etiquette, spots, mm -hmm. characters, and everything you can run into in Hawaii just to make your stay great day in Hawaii. Here we go. Is this a bomb? Ooh, someone's, someone's deep, deep in a rut. Oh, a drop little air drop. down. Beautiful. Cuts oh, his it's going to kick out right in front of this neck Ooh, set. Ooh, that might have not been smart. Maybe ride it out a little bit more. Let's see if he makes it over. Is there any people in the way? Not so far. Must have got moaned. Here, here we go. Oh, late drops. Late drops. Back. Regular died. foot, goofy foot. Oh, will they hold on? Goofy footers blown up. Oh, he even went over oh, again. That's Luke Shepherdson. Yeah, Luke. Let's see if our drone can follow him into the shore break. Ooh, oh, went for the layback. Full on cut into the white water. That nice. was nice by Brother Luke. North Shore Surf Shop. Picked his time. Every surfer is different, you know, little windows of when they want to surf. It's uh, helpful that he's wearing that lime wetsuit. Help us to identify him. Yeah, and then they had a close up of him mm -hmm. right when they pulled up when he pulled up on the lineup, so that was great.
So yeah. There's the skis, there's the shot of everybody out there. And there's more a new pack paddling out towards these guys. Here it is, that replay. Below sea level. Explosion. Luffy Footer didn't make it, but Luke yeah. here did. Luke's smart though, he even did the the look back just to see. As he's getting a nice little inside track, cuts it. Oh, like he said, he was doing Larry Lair on that thing. Oh, but his rail engaged. Action? Yep, live action. Green and red, sharing a wave. Green and red, red's out of there, out of respect, kicking out. Not wanting to get in the guy's way. So if you guys are just joining us, this isn't a surf competition. This is Surf Lines series. This is 20 foot plus, done up by Surfline, by a killer group, Heavy Water Surf Organization. It was started in 2019 by Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter. They wanted to put their careers in their own hands, Jamie said. We wanted to write our own path of big wave surfing. They want to see young guys and girls have a gateway of a professional career in big wave surfing. So they've got a bunch of like-minded surfers involved where they're heading in the right direction. And, you know, they're looking to change the sport of big wave surfing. And, you know, they just do this for themselves as well. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And it's cool that they're in collaboration with Surfline because mm -hmm. Surfline provides them the forecast for the best place to be yeah. and the best time. And, and then, um, what yeah, a great a cool collab, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, this is like the first of a lot of them. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, you ever see Nathan Florin's IG before Christmas? He took you around the world with all his girl GoPro tubes. And I just had to write him, thank you, man. <laughs> thank I you, got tubed <laughs> everywhere around the world from his vision. You know, it's just amazing. You know how much time and money you saved me? No, I know. I was like, dude. And I mean, that some of these spots are too scary for brother as thanks for getting me just in and out of there a oh, tube yeah. spectacular so nathan florence <laughs> the word for that vicarious you kind of vicariously means you living through someone else and that's one of the beauties of what of what we're doing here today we can imagine ourselves in this position and from the safety of our couch mm -hmm. yes we are safe me and isaiah walker calling the play for plays yeah as the lineup looks like it's gotten a little bit crowded some of these people have been out there for like four or five hours now they must have had a big breakfast or you know every surfer is different some people don't drink eat, eat breakfast at all they just drink a ton of coffee Bro, I feel like day out i haven't had time to eat much lately either <laughs> <laughs> You've been, uh, My you're, kids are good. Like, you're in class and then you're right back on the headset, buddy. And uh, uh, don't think you're going to eat tomorrow. We're hoping to go live at the backdoor shootout. Don't forget to join us, guys. Again, oh, look at this. Look at this live paddle. Live surf line. Beautiful setup as he just paddled right in and stood up, but uh, pretty small this wave. Looks like he's carrying a GoPro in his mouth, getting himself his personal edit. Looks a little bit like Chandler, huh? From North Chandler. Shore. Yeah. Did you see that? Bruh. With the beard? From Good that call. one thing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And then that boom, kick sad. out on one, uh, kick out at Makaha with a three stringer longboard. <laughs> Goofy foot. <laughs> <laughs> Still love the movie. That's my favorite. Still love the movie. There were so many of those two oh, where like he pulls in front side on a two yeah. foot wave at Eukai and comes out Goofy foot at pipe on a ten yeah. footer. Yeah, and then I got to, I didn't put two and two together. And I got to uh, travel around with Mike Latronic, and then when he said something, I said, "What? You're like that's what you're they're Rick Kane? <laughs> what? I oh, I get it now. It's just like when my dad said, "Hey, who's that in Conan?" I was like, "I don't know." He's like, "You watch this all the time. Who is that?" When he told me it was Jerry Lopez, my jaw just hit the uh, floor. Uh, I didn't even know that was Uncle Jerry.
There's also a new documentary on Jerry Lopez that came out, The Yin and Yang of S Jerry Lopez really? surfing. Really? Where yeah, can I find Sam that? Sam George made that one. Oh, Sam George is that? Sam George cool. made some good ones. Um, actually, ESP, the ESPN 30 for 30 film that Sam George made, I was, you know, I was happy to, I uh, actually was part of it too, that like, the, you know, doing the interviews with them and kind of Shoot. giving them some historical consulting Sam and George stuff. Is and, but that, you know, so he's done some good movies, but this one on Jerry. I mean, really cool film, but one of the things it kind of does, I think, is good, is kind of break through some of the over-glorification of Jerry as just like some Zen Buddhist meditating cool guru guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he definitely is that. Here's mm -hmm. a way of writing right here. Nice, back but, to um, Medium one. Also shows that he wasn't it's always... It's a here. Let me see this. No, go ahead. Sorry, Isaiah. Oh, no. Here's a, another, some more waves. Oh, I wonder if the jet ski went around. Okay, guys, big wave coming. Look big one coming because there's the one in the back. back zone. There's one in the back. I mean, Jerry's like a Zen guru yeah. snowboarder, too. Right, right, right. But I, in the hole, look how deep this guy wow, is. Wow, this Way guy. Back there. Do go. you want it? Oh, he was on the red board. There Beautiful you go. that he made it. Nice. All the way out to the edge of the white water. Very nice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, in that Good film, it, it also kind of breaks through some of that myth of like that he was just this chill guy and it shows a more kind of competitive, like in his younger years, that he mm -hmm. was a bit more aggressive than you would assume. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, and then sort of his journey of sort of becoming more kind of chill and balancing sort of his, his like energy and stuff. Like he was uh, more anal, like his character, a bit Vince more aggressive. Mo, Moa Loco, oh, back <laughs> in the day. Or just, but yeah, fair, just real competitive. But fair, like yeah. and, and like, you know, aggressive in the lineup, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, just like in, uh, you know, everything that's happening in the world now, he, he's seen things just get popular and just people just start coming out. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. Everybody can do it. It's just, you know, you got to make sure you do it properly. You know? And yeah, so there's some guys that have been out there since the morning time. I still recognize their jerseys. That's a super session. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're gonna catch a ton of waves within half an hour. So these guys are definitely diehards. I've I've pictured them out here from eight o'clock, actually. Looks like a few people went in as well. As you can see, a nice pack out there right now, but not too many guys. Nobody's breathing on the back of anybody's neck like I seen last week. And thanks for joining us. You guys are watching the 20 foot plus the series brought to you by Surfline, Red Bull, um, Future Fins, and brought to you by and filmed by this amazing crew we're with today is Sultan Air Studios. Thank you to Mike Prickett, Ikaika, David, Kevin, Terrence, Rick, Pat, Josh, and Eric. Always takes a small community to make an amazing um, event like this. Well, it's not an event; it's just an expression session. As look, mm -hmm. Isaiah, we got a new pack, new pack of big up. wave riders headed back out to the lineup. And uh, yeah, all timing from the beach. People are coming in. Oh, how was it, brother? Pretty mm -hmm. good. I'm cold. I'm gonna eat lunch. Actually, earlier there's got a red and yellow board. Might be my friend Hopena Okipala. In this pack right now? I think that earlier there was gotcha. a guy that like, looked like my friend Hopena. We'll see if that's him or not, but. 
when you're a fan of surfing and been a surfer, it's funny, like, you know, an average Joe Bill, how do you know that's them? Well, I've True. been surfing for a long time, it you is, know? It is you a trip, jump though. on YouTube watching videos. You don't even need to go the name. I'll be like, that's so-and-so. My right? wife always blows blows my mind. Huh? She blows her mind on that, too, where she's like, how do you, like, how yeah, can you? Yeah, silhouette. But it's like sunny. easy. Just yeah. everyone has their own signature yeah. style. Exactly, yeah. But I will say this. At the bay, it's harder. It is. It because is because not it changes their style. It, um, you're getting combobulated. You're also... And you're just going straight. Exactly, but... But you can tell those guys that come out of that straightness, you know, right. the elevators, innovators. You'd be, oh, okay, that's so and so. Or you know, you know, a lot of our our nephews, the ones that go into the lip, you're like, whoa, that, that whoa, okay, that's so and so. So, yeah, years of being a surf fan and surfing, you end up, you know calling the shots but at Waimea Isaiah it's different it changes it also changes that surfer that you're so used to watching mm -hmm. but yeah and out the back I personally feel like that stamp of distinction with each of our surfers is lessening though I mean I don't know if me just being old oh look at that oh went over the falls Oof. and now didn't quite make it w but I mean like I don't know it seemed seems like surfers especially you go watch footage from the 70s and the 80s mm -hmm. everyone had really distinct styles you know what i mean like right. and, they, and right. they would have nicknames like mark richards was the wounded gull because he like had a real bird-like stance that he would right ride. and he'd open up his wings right. on the cutty yeah. um, and then you know larry had his laybacks and a certain way of doing things and everybody had a real Elko was like very aggressive but stuttery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had that kind of like yeah, twitch little. Th uh -huh. That yeah, Gary Elkerton, Elkerton, and and everybody had like r Tom Curran, like like with his arm the way he hold it out. Uh -huh. um, and so, but it seems like surfers, we, I mean, they surf more similar to each other than they used to. I don't know if. No, no, yeah. I don't know if it's I just the product of c being coached or look here we go. There's a lot of oh. oversaturation as well. Or, or, or maybe That's just That's one like of the Ruka <coughs> guys from oh, yeah, uh, we saw Hawaii, there. yeah. Talking to Tomokua mm -hmm. this morning. Okay. You see that sun headed lower in the sky and toward yep. cut kind of points. As that sun starts to descend, we're going to descend a little for a little bathroom break here, and uh, we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, gang. I get in cleaning mode. I want to clean until the soil of our rice. I don't know why. I wake up really early. I like waking up like at 4 because I take my time. First I drink my coffee, then I have breakfast, and then I start stretching first, and then I start dancing. I have to dance for 20 minutes. It doesn't matter like if I'm late or anything, I still have to dance because I feel like that warms me up. And then on the way of like my house to the break, Led Zeppelin. I like to eat banana pancakes with oatmeal. So I use oatmeal, eggs, and banana, and all together with maple syrup. Mindfulness plus workout. So it's just balance, holding your breath and weights all at the same time. And I got certified to be a level three free diver. That is the training um, that gives you the most confidence, I would say. Breath hold in static, I can do four minutes and 35 seconds. I like using a 10 -0. Oh yeah, and I have a 10 four and a 10 six. All right, welcome, aloha gang. Welcome back to the Big Wave Expression Session. This is the new series 20 Foot Plus brought to you by Surfline. Thank you for having us today. Thank you Salt and Air Studios, Future Fins and Red Bull. We currently got Red Bull, Magnitude, a few Wahines are still left out in the lineup. My name is Ezra Rodriguez. Along with me is Isaiah, Professor Dr. Isaiah Walker. How you doing, Breda? Oh, it's been awesome. It's um, interesting. Even though we're not surfing, I feel like I've been out here in the water the whole time, mm -hmm. just watching, and got I to feel salty. 
a lot of good surfing action. We have some. We have an, uh, another shift coming out. I don't know mm -hmm. if this is the after work, after school group that's headed out right now, but the bay has delivered pretty consistent surf. Yeah. I mean, even, even though it's like right lingering right around the 20 foot range and we haven't seen like massive 30 footers yeah. or closeouts, but it's nonetheless, it's been pretty consistent and a lot of great waves were ridden. We're able to uh, talk through those rides mm -hmm. and try and identify as best as we can who some of these riders are, mm -hmm. but definitely celebrating big wave surfing. And we're excited that um, Surfline has teamed up with our heavy water surf organization. And the idea is to, you know, bring these, uh, this relationship between Surfline to provide the uh, features that, uh, that take viewers deep into the world of big wave surfing and, um, and get the perspective from uh, from big wave surfers and and so heavy water is this group that uh, essentially started by Jamie Stur or Jamie Mitchell and uh, and they they work together to uh, kind of bring surfing into the spotlight for big wave surfing. There's a replay here. One of our Wahine, and that is kaya waldman and she's been out there for a for long the duration yeah good stuff here we go look at this one nice drop oh nice Ooh. um the roll off the rail the roll. very dangerous oh. maneuver i just feel that when you've done that your body hasn't even really um gotten ready when you do the roll over the rail and you don't even penetrate too, so the aftermath of not penetrating going that fast is not fun. And uh, like we said earlier, we've seen about five guys leave the shore break, so you know when there's a different pack of surfers, we could see some different things. And who is this paddling back out? That looks like Makua Rotman, but I'm not too sure. A bit closer. Who is that? Kua had a good session this morning. Oh. That isn't him, so. That's Some not Makani Bryce, is it? No, no, that's not. But uh, Kamakani, great performance at the backdoor shootout. Good to see you in the longboard division. And yeah, there is definitely a new pack of colors out there. Blues and reds and oranges. Thanks you to Salt and Air Studios and Greta Pat, the drone pilot. One of the best. Great um, shots here by Salt and Air Studios with drone angles and from the beach, from the water, and bringing all these angles to you. Um, you know, I know it's it's nice to have a surf line that you can go and check out the the live cams that they have mm -hmm. that are that are stationary, but. This is a little special. Now you got a series. Here. You we know? got all kind of angles, and so really cool that Surfline is doing this to provide us great insight into what it's like to be in the lineup on a day like today, mm -hmm. circling around with drones and uh, water camera angles and so forth. So beautiful day at the bay. Yep, it's been great calling it with you. You know. People are asking, is this a competition? No, this is 20 foot plus. It's an experience. We're inviting all view viewers to join. And today, thank you for joining us at Waimea. So thank you to Surfline. If you're not a member, please go. And if you guys are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And thank you to Jamie Mitchell and Zach Porter for bringing this new big wave expression session to elevate and innovate the sport of big wave surfing because there's not a huge tour platform. So me and Isaiah Walker had a great day watching the waves with you. Hopefully you guys had the same as we got a big bomb coming in here. Not a big bomb, but a technical takeoff as they just got blown out the back. So good job to Salt and Air Studios. Like to thank them too. Future Fins, Red Bull, Magnitude, and to all our amazing surfers. Oh, wow. Here's a beautiful off the bottom by Luke Shepherdson. Cuts it by the white water so he can drift more distance into the inside. So, yeah, still some large surf on offer. 
Yeah, and hopefully we, uh, some of our female surfers were able to get some contestable clips that they can post up on Red Bull um, site here on the magnitude. Yeah, right? and they're also going to be in the next week, Red Bull Surf TV. Do you guys have it? Man, I love it. It's got motocross, all kinds of disciplines, dirt, carnage, water, all kinds of stuff. Canoe paddling, go to Red Bull TV if you don't have it. And this is going to be aired in the next week. And uh, a lot of footage from that. Eric Eppel and all the gang. You've seen Bielman out there. And, oh, man, look at all the beautiful board colors right there. It's like That's Easter art. egg hunt. Oh, yeah, big time. So yeah, here's some of our replays from the day. Oh, that was a deep one. Yeah, that was a deep one. That looked like one of the Eddie ones, you know, big white water. But you never know, every wave is different. Luke Shepard's in here. Got the drone angle of that same wave. In Hawaii, like, we had, especially yesterday, but you can still see a little bit in the air, this bog, right? So bog is volcanic. Yeah. Uh, bog, instead yep. of fog, it's the volcanic fog. And- um, It was major yesterday. It was, because <laughs> um, if you weren't aware, the Big Island has been going mm -hmm. pretty mental with the, with the Pele has been going pretty bonkers lately. So Mauna Loa, which is a, one of the world's largest volcanoes, uh, erupted and that's pretty rare you, you know I think p before this year it was like in 1980 something that yeah it and erupted. you know I didn't know that this volcano erupted since then 33 times or is it 32 that's a lot yeah so I thought that was interesting and then they thought that the because of, I mean it's uh, and so the lava was going for a few weeks at Mauna Loa and then it stopped so you think that like the magma was taking a break, but then mm -hmm. Kilauea just cranked up again. So Halemaumau, Mau, the crater there at Volcanoes National Park, full of full of lava. You sure Diamond Head storm at Bumma House? <laughs> 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 uh, yes. Um, so so yeah, times. pretty cool that um, that activity. But that's what you're seeing in the air right now. Is that kind of looks like kind of fog or a little bit of LA kind of look to it. With oh the yeah, it, but it does hurt our asthmatic people a little bit, and it uh, makes beautiful, beautiful neon sunsets. Sunsets, yeah. Great. And it turned the moon red a few times right. too, and that's awesome. I had questions about the volcano and stuff, but I thought we'd just stick with the surf. <laughs> yeah. Always got uh, questions for Isaiah Walker. And it really depends on the wind. And I think as the trade winds come back, then that fog blows away. Mm -hmm. So we're not seeing as much of it. But yesterday... Well, sure, not too bad. But that's fog, right? Yeah. They're on our screen out past the right. ocean. You can see or it. Or could that just be salt helping that? Could be both, right? When yeah. the North Shore gets really big, that, blows off. that ehukai, that sea mm -hmm. kind of mist um, becomes prominent. I love this shot. You can see how big it is. Right. You know? It's pretty big out the back there yeah so uh, volcanic air but the you know the trade winds are returning which is good for the North Shore waves because the North Shore likes those trade winds and um, kind of gives it a side offshore mm -hmm. especially at pipeline which hopefully we'll see tomorrow uh, that likes that trade wind because it blows keeps the barrel open yeah and I know we're gonna have a whole bunch of surfers uh, up tonight thinking about their game plan tomorrow as we're gonna be moving into the main event at the Backdoor Shootout, and Surfline's gonna be bringing it to you live. So we will give you a report about that at about seven o'clock. They'll be checking with Uncle Eddie and all our athletes like Billy Kemper, Nathan Florence, John John Florence, Kelly Slater, uh, Joey Johnson, Reef McIntosh, Mason Ho, champion from last year, just to name a few. They're gonna have a meeting seven in the morning and then keep you guys posted so I'm kind of excited a new competitor to the to the backdoor shootout clay marzo this year is in oh huh i yeah. didn't get informed about that yeah, what team is snap snap team oh yeah six well six or five i can't remember which number but his uh segment in snap fours i mean in all the snaps i i get excited for clay 
He's a savant in the sense that uh, and it maybe has something to do with the way that his his brain is wired a little differently. You know, like the. Yeah, but once he touches water, it's ridiculous that's what, what happens. That's what I'm talking about. It, it it kind of has this creativity. Takes lines mm -hmm. and turns, and the way that he approaches the wave is unique, mm -hmm. and the way he reads it is so different. I mean, especially when he does the layback in the barrel, front side. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Like he yeah. leans back. Oh yeah. Which I've. It just sort of, it doesn't really make sense to me, but mm -hmm. watching him do it is just insane. He did it in, in Bali when he won that event, pulling into the barrel front side, but laying back as if he was backside to stall with his yep. backhand. Love anyway. it. No, but those those turns and his backside barrel riding is, you know, second to none. So it, it's going to be interesting throwing him in that pack of surfers tomorrow. And Jamie O'Brien has got his own team this year. Pipeline Hammers. Here um, comes some sets. We we'll see these lines. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I guess the real question is if it's going to be too big, right? So yep. we're hoping that it's actually smaller. That's what I was thinking, yeah. And here we go. Can these guys get over the berm? And they do. Yeah. Nice, oh. bumpy, lumpy one. Stay with it. Ooh, nice, nice uh, flapjack to the ribs there. Hopefully that surfer's okay as that wave kind of dissipates. Some rodeo training. You're saying Tori Meister. I think there was a oh that guy yeah on. that guy rides bulls so when he's on some big waves he doesn't mind a few bumps the guy will air right over him tory meister Cone actually Boy, bull riding Tanner. oh here we go goofy footer oh nice rail caught a couple of times under earlier. your lip hood i was talking to makua earlier ruka rider Yeah, I've seen um, ads of this guy um, doing airs in Ruka ads. So I, I gotta look for his name, but yeah, great performance by him. He's been out there for hours. Hmm. So I guess yeah. knowing how to rodeo ride could come in handy with big wave surfing. Oh, big time. Actually, a lot of people may not know this, but oh, there were Hawaiian cowboys before there was an American Wild West. Wow. Right? And we think of cowboy country mm -hmm. as the American West and Texas. And we have our own Paniolo but way. The right? Paniolos in Hawaii were in the early 1800s. And um, anyway, I don't know if I have time for that whole story. But in summary, there's a, uh, there was a really cool story of, of some cowboys from, from Big Island where they were years of you know riding and lassoing cows and stuff. Um, they went to a tournament in Wyoming, and there's three Hawaiians, and and they swept the whole tournament of like a, a, <laughs> of a rodeo. And Ikua Purdy was one of the most notable ones. Purdy, here we go, nice drop, beautiful drop, cuts it. He's feeling it on this one in red. Oh, there's, there's more waves out the back. Oh, the back and they're deep. Ooh, he gets cataract over that bump. So it happens when you shoulder hop. <laughs> you don't like shoulder hoppers. No, I just it's just been I've been watching a lot of my way man favorites and I, I just know how they do and I know there's you know, surfing straight Y man and doing some turns, you're you're gonna have people on the ends, but I, I watch how they get the end, you know what I mean? Here we go. I mean, at big, massive 20 foot Makaha, oh. you don't see anybody dropping in on you on the West Bowl after, do you? So right. <laughs> it's just, you know, but it's also a lot of survival, too. Has this guy got another nice backside wave? It's interesting. The shoulder guy on the shoulder got blown up in the gentleman mm -hmm. who was deeper ended up not uh, getting destroyed so you never know which line to take at white mail and that's why it's it's got that little bit of that messy bowl now you know what i mean it's cropping off the top oh, look more waves here we go nice oh, oh, way oh. approximately 422 oh. in the afternoon a little crisscross make you yeah make you upset <laughs> oh it's almost Party like the guy me. looked at him and was like watch my shin dude <laughs> seriously 
But yeah. Oh, look at all these waves. You party waves. Blurry. Oh, wow. Oh, Everybody's party. ready. Let's go. Beautiful. This guy I thought might be my friend Hopeno. I want to say that Maybe. he got a Hana Ho wave. Oh, like he just oh, caught one and he turned around. Awesome. Somebody put a quarter in the wave machine. From deep, yeah. I like how everyone's just being, you know, surfing with etiquette. There hasn't been any carnage in front of my screen. And there's a beautiful silhouette shot. The sun's going to start making its way down over there by Kaena Point. I have uh, to say, like, we I live on the east side of the island, so it, I don't get this uh, as much, you know, like, so... Does the ridge you guys, block the sun? Like, yeah, at once a it certain goes behind time, the Ko'olaus, it's, yeah, we, and, and we don't have the reflection like this. But we get, you know, in the morning, of course, but... So 5.15, you're getting dark on your well, side. Well, it's not bit. dark, but, you know, every time I go to your side of the yeah. island... I realize, right. man, you have to have shades. You yeah, have to have sunglasses sure because otherwise, <laughs> that sun in your eye yeah. just. Yeah. But as a townie, I've been complaining. The sun's been going down early too. You know, after mm. I shut the wood shop, it's like, man, I got a rush now. But that's okay. But yeah, I loved watching the surf with you guys. We got a bunch of surfers out in the lineup. And for those of you asking, is this a competition? No, this is 20 foot plus Surfline got together and made this series just to bring you an, an amazing big wave around the world, not just at Waimea. We just happened to land on the day that Eddie didn't want to go and they wanted to go. So 20 foot plus. And why is it 20 foot plus and not 30, 40, 50 this, feet? Is this Bianca Valenti? I think. Oh, that is. is Bianca. You're right. Good eye, Bianca Valenti. We saw her last year at Pipeline at the backdoor shootout. Yep. Uh, the women last year at WSL charging. Yep, first time ever at the backdoor shootout. These girls had their own team heat. Also to go up against the boys for the one covenant title. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That Mason won, but one of the Wahines could have. And that was my favorite wave is the wave that uh, Bethany Hamilton didn't make it out. That was of. crazy. Because like, uh, especially just standing watching it from the from the porch of the yeah. Volcom house, just watching her pull into a, a wave that clearly had no exit. No, I mean, if she made it out, it would have been a 12. But I mean, just the way she got into it, she got down, she pulled up into it. I mean, I'm gonna say a lot of guys wouldn't have pulled up into that no. thing. <laughs> and she came right out the back, jumped on her board. And I mean, oh, humbling. So it looks like the pack has gotten a little bit tighter. Yeah. Like uh, the crew that came out is a little bit more aggressive. People are is. coming out. Oh, oh shred on. Yeah. Going deep. Going deep. Ooh, that looks like a guy that I've seen, Tyler Laron. Oh, from Maui. Yeah. Oh. I'm surprised if any Maui surfers are here today. Yeah, that's why I was going to ask. He just looks familiar. But we'll see. You know, the Eddie was going to go. Some people never got that last memo on the news. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? So they came over here to compete. And they, what What do you mean it's off? Oh, look at this one. This guy's carving it up back there. Did you see that? That was yeah. a nice high line to high a nice line. cut. As he's going down. Even if you're not a surfer, watching this live surf line, mm -hmm. Kevin, like very relaxing, you know? Like it is. Here we are in Hawaii live. No, exactly. I As the sun is descending and the surf is pounding, and which is ironic, because if you were in the water, it'd be anything but yeah. relaxing. I mean, be nerve wracking. No, I mean, Salt and Air Studios and Surf Line should have their oh. own channel on TV. Oh, that was, oh. 
relax on the North Shore Pacific Ocean. Uh, endo over the handlebars on that last one. That's what that guy did, huh? Yeah. Oh, I seen it. It was kind of silhouette but... Guy kicked out. Oh, bro, that guy got donuts. Check him. That seems like a common theme at Waimea, where you're going too fast. And I don't know if it goes from, like, really flat fast to hitting the mm -hmm. brakes. Yeah. Uh, just the transition. Uh, from the from the drop to the flats mm -hmm. I mean that's what happened to Mason on that big day uh, 2016 we've seen Brock Little that classic the 30 foot closeout he caught the same thing happened where like he's got all this speed mm -hmm. but as soon as you hit the transition on the bottom it's like something happens mm -hmm. to where you it's hard to like ride through that I don't know if it's a change of speed or there if might be some turbulence and, mm. and cross swells on the inside and then you got to think some of these guys dust the cobwebs off their guns too not everybody you know what i mean there's big wave riders that don't always ride their guns because they they're above the lip surfers too so it's like that's what i was saying earlier it's really good like when you're in this big wave game to like ride your gun a lot to get to know it you know what i mean like so you know like every edge every foot of your board you know how to ride in the middle that's one thing i really think is I noticed about Kai Len, he's really worked hard to like work on his equipment like in big mm -hmm. wave boards. He knows his equipment. And he rides smaller ones, right? But wider and and mm -hmm. just enough to get him in and what he wants to see in his big wave surfing, but he's also elevating the big wave surfing because him and Billy Kemper and uh, like guys like Makua and certain guys, they're the guys that bottom turn, go up to the chip shot of the lip and cut it where we weren't doing that years yeah. ago. You know what I mean? So that is, you know, thumbs up to you, brothers. And uh, yeah. Ooh, huge cloud rolling through on the inside of this drone footage right, as well, we got one out the back. It's been a beautiful afternoon here beautiful afternoon. at Waimea Bay but we're actually going to wrap up this broadcast but uh, before we do we want to thank you guys the viewers the audience for watching uh, this is a new program 20 foot plus here's some highlights here we're looking at it's a program that Surfline looks forward to bringing you into this lineup I mentioned that earlier we definitely feel like we're here in the middle of the action as we watch these highlights even so big thanks to all of the sponsors from Future Fins, the Sea Dew, Red Bull, and Heavy Water Surf members. We watch these highlights here. Uh, we want to make sure that we're um, saying a big mahalo to all of you and for sticking with us. These are some highlight clips as Ooh. we're we're ending our day. It's been a great day as these three are dropping down. Ooh, the middle guy hasn't had the best luck today. In surfing, we call that a triangle. <laughs> oh, some steep ones. Those are some steep ones. This guy was a good performer today. I would, I would flip if it's. Um, There's one wipeout. You're talking yeah. about you didn't see many wipeouts. Yeah. Here we that go. Watch this one. action. Oh, that was the one. No one went. Oh, that was the big one. There, the blue helmet. Hopefully, she got underneath that. Mm -hmm. Here's a cool slow mo from the Air water temple. angle. Watch how all that really water. Good. And this is when we deciphered, is this Kiala Kenley or what? And then boom, right? You seen the back leash? I believe right. it is her. That yeah, was. Oh, that was the that side was the slip. One. This was one of that could have better went really waves of the bad. day. This is a tall wave, three riders over the handlebars. That was a legitimate uh, white male wave. Here's Kiala, excuse me. Yeah, this was, if you see her grabbing rail, see that? interesting leash that's attached to her on the back yeah always ripping it up beautiful white man drop bottom turn thought i was gonna go up this thing barrel i can get into that pops out of the white wash this is a good one this guy fades hard left now he was so deep already didn't work out for either of them oh i was one didn't quite get into he's lucky he didn't go over very true Another nice late drop here. This one, Surf was able to get way in front of the whitewash. It's what you want to do today here at the bay. Yeah, great stuff. Here we go. Nice fade off the bottom. That was the carving turn we saw today. Not right many of those, but another nice late drop. That's a late drop, yeah. Another 
expect. We got up and out Ooh. of the other surfer's way. This guy's been charging all day. Nice carving turns. I have another party wave. Oh, it's a great water angle. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I must have missed that one. I didn't see that one, but yeah, great water angle. As these two, oh, another over the handlebars, hardcore, extended the neck. Oh, there's another great double up wave taking those hops. I remember seeing this one with you. I was thinking that was Tyler, but not sure. I oh, was Maui was that was an incredible good. drop. That's the one that just recently went over the handlebars. Thank you guys, it's been an awesome day. Thank you for having us, mahalo, mahalo. Come join us again at the 20 Foot Plus series by Surfline and Salt Air Studios. Thank you, Isaiah Walker, it's been an amazing day. Mahalo. Calling the shots with you. Have a good day. Thank you for joining.